I'm Phyllis Jackson. Welcome to Stay at Home Connect. Cases of COVID-19 are on the rise in nearly half of the U.S., especially concerning the number of hospitalizations, leaving several facilities approaching capacity. An interesting trend across the South, where a younger demographic is experiencing a surge in new cases, groups in their 20s and 30s becoming infected in Mississippi, Texas, and Florida, which is now being described as the next potential epicenter for the virus. Emory University infectious disease specialist Dr. Carlos Del Rio addresses the spike in cases here in Georgia. I want to emphasize this because this has caused some confusion. Um, Testing doesn't cause cases. Testing simply diagnoses cases. When you have an infection, a test tells you who has it. So doing testing and saying, well, we, we have more cases because we're doing more testing. No, we have more cases and we're finding them out because we're doing testing, but if we weren't doing the testing, we will still have more cases. The problem is, you know, I'm seeing a lot of people around that are going to restaurants and going to other places and not taking precautions. And I've seen them in the grocery store and I've seen them in other places. It's like, I'm over. And you hear things like, I can't breathe with a mask, you know, I'd rather get infected. And I think that's the problem. A lot of young people don't get symptomatic or get mildly symptomatic or minimally symptomatic. They can bring the disease to other people in their families. In the hospital, I saw somebody who's 21 years old, critically ill in the ICU a couple days ago. So just because you're young doesn't mean you're going to be fine. Dr. Del Rio says the virus will be with us for a while. We have to adapt to a new normal. He says hand washing must become a part of that new normal, along with face masks and face shields. He showed us the face shield he uses at work. Dr. Jody Guest has been working with the Latino population in Hall County these past several weeks, largely connected to the poultry plants, where they're seeing as much as a 25% positive case rate. So they're working in a crowded condition, um, and then they're going home and living in crowded conditions as well. And we know that COVID-19 is going to take off in situations like that. Click on a state to see county by county COVID-19 mortality. To keep up with the latest on the virus and identify which communities are being affected, Emory launches a COVID-19 Health Equity Interactive Dashboard. You can find it at covid19.emory.edu. The Atlanta City Council approves the fiscal year 2021 budget, which begins July 1st. The approximately $673 million budget was approved by a vote of 13 to 2. Atlanta City Council members Andrea Boone and Michael Julian Bond share touching sentiments about their dads in recognition of Father's Day. You can see their stories on our Medium post. Go to medium.com forward slash at Atlanta City Council. And we'd like to welcome the newest member to the Atlanta City Council and Team Hillis. Say hello to Riley Alexis Hillis, the daughter of Council Member Dustin Hillis. She certainly knows how to make an entrance. She arrived on Father's Day, coming in at 8 pounds and 19 and a half inches long. Mom and baby are doing just fine. That's going to do it for Stay at Home Connect. Have a safe night. Can one girl in a small town, an architect in a major city, and a suburban high school coach shape the future of the United States? Yes, they can. Because every 10 years, the census gives us that power. You can shape your future by responding to the 2020 census. Where do we need new roads to make our lives easier? Where will new school programs help our children thrive? Where could a new health clinic benefit neighborhoods? The 2020 census will inform these decisions and shape how billions of dollars will be distributed to communities like yours each year. And in 2020, you can respond to the census online, by phone, or by mail. It's easy, safe, and important. Make sure you and everyone you know is counted. Now is the time for you to get involved. Your community needs you. Together, we can educate and excite, inspire and make sure every voice is heard. Together, we can shape our future. I'm Phyllis Jackson. Welcome to Stay at Home Connect. 
The drug dexamethasone is being hailed as a major breakthrough in the fight against coronavirus. Researchers in the UK held clinical trials involving 2,100 COVID-19 patients. They say the inexpensive, widely used steroid reduced death rates by one-third among the most critically ill, hospitalized patients on ventilators. Researchers stress that among COVID-19 patients requiring no respiratory support, dexamethasone provided no benefits. The FDA revokes the emergency use authorization for hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine. The organization says both medications are unlikely to be effective in treating COVID-19 and have led to serious cardiac adverse events and other major side effects. Music Midtown 2020 has been rescheduled due to the coronavirus. The massive music event will be held September 18th and 19th of 2021. Current ticket holders don't need to worry. Organizers say the tickets will be valid for the new dates. Full refunds are available for those who cannot attend. Before returning to play, kids, coaches, and parents can follow these tips to protect themselves and others from COVID-19. The CDC issues tips on keeping kids safe while participating in sports. Among the recommendations, bring your own equipment and don't share towels or any items you would use to wipe your face or hands. The city of Atlanta designates this week as Cheek Week to spread the word about the need for black and African-American donors to donate bone marrow. Atlanta City Council member Andre Dickens issues a statement regarding Cheek Week, calling it an SOS to the black and African-American community, as well as all from ethnically diverse backgrounds. It reads in part, please step up and help save a life because we are the cure. We have the power within us to help change one more disparity affecting black lives. And it starts with a simple cheek swab. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to the Transportation Committee here at Atlanta City Council. Uh, it, the time is now 9.31 and I have the pleasure of serving as your chairman for the Transportation Committee. Uh, my name is Andre Dickin and we have several council members also on this call. We've been joined by uh, my vice chair, which is Marcy Collier Overstreet. We have J.P. Mathekite on the call, as, as well as Amir Faroki, Matt Westmoreland, and Antonio Brown. We are a quorum of members present, so we may proceed. Um, I would like to get a, a motion. Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda. Is there a second? Second, Brown. All right. Oh, excuse uh, me, Mr. Chair. We'll have to amend the agenda to accept a walk-in paper. So if we can first make oh. the motion to amend and then adopt, and we'll do both votes electronically. Yes, that, that is, that is uh, correct. I'll make a motion to amend the agenda to accept a walk-in uh, paper. Is there a second? Second, Brown. All right. So you said we need to do both by vote, by voice, or by electronic? Electronic vote. We'll prepare the vote. One moment, please. Okay. The vote is open. Close, closed, 7808. The agenda has been amended. Okay, now I'll make a motion to adopt, uh, to approve the uh, amended agenda. Is there a second? Second, Brown. All right, let's prepare our vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed, 7808. The agenda has been adopted as amended. Okay, now I make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Okay, let's prepare a vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed. Seven years, zero okay. eight. Good. Thank you. Seven yeas, zero nays, the agenda and the uh, minutes are approved. Now it's time for public comment. Um, the way public comment works is because we're not in person, we have people call in uh, to give us their public comment, and that's been going on since we've had the coronavirus um, stay-at-home orders. And so uh, we have traditionally, when in person, done public comment where there's two areas for public comment. One is in the beginning, the one that, that is uh, items that are related to the Transportation Committee agenda, and then at the end is public comment for general uh, items related to anything that anybody wants to talk about. Ms. Pulandini, would you please play the uh, public comments? And read? I guess you have to read the statement related to public comments. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'll read the statement first, and then uh, we will commence with uh, the public comments related to items related to this committee. The Transportation Committee is being conducted remotely as advertised and as in accordance with OCGA 50-14-1. The meeting will be conducted in conformance with Robert's Rules of Order and the Rules of Council as authorized by the City Code. The public may access the meeting by dialing 877-579-6743, conference ID 831-599-1256, which was noted on the June 19, 2020 public meeting notice. The public may also view the meeting on Channel 26, the Council's homepage at citycouncil.atlantaga.gov, the Council's YouTube channel, or the Council's Facebook and Twitter pages via at ATL Council. All presentations are available on the Atlanta City Council Transportation Committee presentation page. The agenda was published and made available on June 19, 2020 via atlantacityga.iqm2.com. In addition, the public was able to submit comments via voicemail at 404-330-6059 up to one hour prior to this meeting, and these comments will be played 
uh, shortly. All persons present on the remote council meeting conference bridge are requested to mute your phones and speakers. Additionally, speakers must be acknowledged by the presiding officer prior to speaking. Each council member is requested to open your Outlook email and minimize the screen. Amendments, substitutes, informational documents have been distributed to committee members beforehand. Thank you all in advance for your cooperation, and we will now commence playing the comments related to this committee. Thank you. Ben Howard. Greetings to you committee members and staff, and special greetings to you citizens of Atlanta monitoring your government in action. Ben Howard, Senior Advocate, Public Policy Analyst. So agenda item H4, 20-0-1380, the plan is to allocate $4,658,000 plus dollars for the purpose of modernizing traffic signals, communication corridors, complete streets, and intersection improvement projects. This modernization promise is not new to residents on and near Capitol Road. In 2006, residents and senior citizens along Cableton Road were promised continuing updates on Cableton Road Phase 1, Cableton Road Phase 2, and Cableton Road Phase 3. That 2006 meeting was held at Mount Carmel Baptist Church because people posing as neighborhood planning unit or leaders at that time would not allow such matters to be placed on NPUR agendas. On three occasions, a certified resident organization, which is also protected under provisions of the United States Housing and Urban Development Department, known as HUD, was denied the right to be placed on the agenda of Neighborhood Planning Unit R to discuss matters on behalf of senior citizens and other residents in the proximity of City of Atlanta senior zones. I ask that you take the necessary steps to have this monetary matter vetted throughout the neighborhood planning system. Be advised, however, that any attempt to add any edifying information to the tightly controlled agenda of NPUR will be met with fierce resistance from the NPUR 9, Anthony Robinson, Corliss Clare, Ricardo Jacobs, Renette L. Scott, Alfred White, Allison Hathaway, and the NPUR9 cohorts. I thank you. Good morning. This is Shana Pollock calling from Central Atlanta Progress and the Atlanta Downtown Improvement District asking Transportation Committee to hold 20-0-1471, authorizing the mayor on his extended need to dedicate roadway leads for the exclusive use of transit within the North Avenue and Summer Hill and Campbellton corridors. Voting to dedicate lanes for Summerhill BRT and North Avenue BRT is premature as the requisite engagement activities have not occurred. On North Avenue, to our knowledge, zero outreach has occurred on this project. For the Summerhill BRT project, which is advancing more rapidly, the project did not appear on any vetted voting list and has not gone through comprehensive stakeholder or public engagement. CAP ADID has requested stakeholder public engagement for this project for nearly 18 months. But there have only been two poorly advertised public meetings held two days apart without route maps. Based on those two meetings, Florida and the state of Atlanta appear to be rapidly proceeding with an unvetted alignment. Many downtown stakeholders have requested meetings with Florida. None has been held for either project, and we discovered this ordinance without any notice. Neither project has been vetted through neighborhood associations, CIDs, property owners, or NPUs. This process has a poor precedent for all future more modern projects moving three BRP projects, each in varying stages of planning for city council together does not allow for meaningful engagement. In addition, CAP ADID is opposed to the summer hill alignment and continues to state a strong preference for the alternate running the Georgia State Station, which has been abandoned as an option without any rationale. Running on MLK Junior Drive and Mitchell Street, and plus with existing and partially funded plans to create a pedestrian and bike-oriented street network in South Downtown. Running on streets that rely on on-street parking for business and already late with over 130 bucks a day is not consistent with any adopted plan. In addition, the Georgia State alignment allows door to door access to heavy rail and limits charge, creating a premium ride. The MLK Metro alignment does not. If any part of the city of Atlanta's 4A, the BRT with an unvetted and unsupported alignment threat to jeopardize all future BRT projects. Thanks for your time. This is Sagira 
Jones from the Atlanta Bicycle Coalition calling to ask the Transportation Committee to hold Ordinance 20-0-1471 in order to gather more community input. We strongly support Bus Rapid Transit for Atlanta. It has been lauded by MARTA and the city as a more economical and effective solution for transit in lieu of light rail. But now during this important stage of planning, the committee is tasked with voting on an ordinance for specific roadway designation before a scheduled community meeting regarding BRT. Atlanta has a playbook that clearly states that outreach is essential to community engagement with citizens. The community must have the opportunity to view route maps, review budget, and provide feedback. There has been no engagement on the North Avenue route. The last engagement regarding the Summerhill route was in October 2019, and just having a meeting is not enough, as the Summerhill meetings were conducted without presenting any maps to residents. And as for the Campbellton Road route, there will be a public meeting tomorrow night. As a committee that makes the point of gaining residents' insights in order to best serve their transportation needs, please hold the vote on Ordinance 20-0-1471 until further community input has been collected regarding specific roadway designations for the Moore Marta BRT project. Hi, my name is April Stammel, and on behalf of uh, my company, Newport, I am calling to express concerns um, regarding the BRT Summer Hill Project. Despite repeated requests, um, no stakeholder input has occurred to advance the project, including ourselves. Um, and we just believe that a decision to align um, with one route or dedicate lanes should not be made without public or stakeholder input. Um, we have requested several times to be involved in plans and progress and timing and um, have yet to be engaged. And if we're truly prioritizing transit, um, we feel like MARTA and the city should have been much more forthcoming and giving opportunities for the public and stakeholders such as ourselves to be a part of the conversation. Uh, we're really curious why the city uh, and MARTA have de decided on this route specifically. Um, when it doesn't connect to a MARTA station, and um, we're just curious why it feels like it's being rushed uh, when no plans have been shared. And I would also like to point out that this, these dedicated lanes directly conflict with the adopted and accepted plan from City Council in 2017 for South Downtown, really focusing on walkability and bikeability of this area. Our investment is very large, and we own many of the properties that uh, align MLK and Mitchell, um, and really just want to be a part of uh, this conversation in a more meaningful way. Thanks. Hi, my name is Dr. Adora Poon, and I'm calling to urge you to um, not do the $15 million cut for um, transportation, specifically pupil transportation, which would already lead to the state spending even less funding on an already underfunded transportation formula. I ask instead and just desperately urge you to amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. That money could be so much um, better used in other departments and transportation is already underfunded. I please again urge you amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and reallocate the $73 million of police funds to, to reimagine community and public safety. Thank you so much for your time and your energy in this. Bye-bye. Oh, my name is Pam Reavy peterson a South Downtown resident. Uh, my comment is that I would um, like for to see public um, involvement prior to a vote on the MARTA BRT lanes, especially concerning those in downtown. Um, we'd like very much to make sure that the planning for these lanes um, is um, and with, within accordance to uh, recommendations made by the citywide um, and CAP plans uh, for improvement in downtown. Thank you. Hi, in 
good morning. This is Miss Misha, the Urban Advocate, calling on behalf of the Kimmel community. I'm calling regarding Ordinance 20 0 1253, which is a um, second read from an ordinance by Councilmember Cleta Winslow in order to make the intersection of Ralph David Abernathy and Form Walk a always stop. This intersection has the only store in the area of Family Dollar there, and it needs to be monitored. Not only do we have a heavy senior and youth population, but it is a major roadway, um, and it needs to be taken care of. There's no reason it can be dragged out. Again, I've been working on this for 14 months. In addition to this intersection needing to be an always stop, I have constantly requested that the crosswalk area be paved so that it's clear that residents can cross. And in addition to that, the conditions of the family dollar are awful. So there's three issues at this area and you all have the power to address two of them. Again, that is ordinance 20-0-1253. I would appreciate it if you could move with urgency on this matter, as again, it's been an issue for 14 months that I've been addressing with you all. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Deb Day, and I just would like to leave a comment um, to ask for public participation and support of the downtown master plan prior to the vote. Thank you. Hello, yes, this is Robin Jackson. I am the current president of the Atlanta Downtown Neighborhood Association, otherwise known as ADNA. I understand there is going to be some um, ordinance tomorrow coming up for um, a BRT through MARTA in Summerhill. And um, the Downtown Neighborhood Association has not been involved in any of these talks yet. We would really like to be able to be involved, make comments, ask questions, see some plans, see a presentation, et cetera. Again, Robin Jackson with the Atlanta Downtown Neighborhood Association regarding the Summer Hill, Summer Hill BRT remodel. Thank you. And that concludes our public comment. Okay, thank you. Thank you for those comments. <clears throat> we have taken them into consideration and we'll deal with each one of them as their particular legislative item comes before us. Now, uh, Madam, uh, Ms. Tulandini, please read our uh, first read off of the consent agenda. Yes, Mr. Chair, item number one, 201471, an ordinance by Transportation Committee authorizing the mayor her designee to dedicate roadway lanes for the exclusive use of transit within the North Avenue corridor, Summerhill corridor and Campbellton corridors in conjunction with the more Mar MARTA program of projects, the 2018 Atlanta transportation plan, the one Atlanta strategic transportation plan and Atlanta city design and related subsequent transit corridor plans to repeal conflicting ordinances and for other purposes, Item number 2, 2001472, an ordinance by Transportation Committee authorizing the mayor to retroactively enter into renewal number one with Cor Corporate Environmental Risk Management LLC for FC 9381 on-call engineering survey services at Hartsville Jackson Atlanta International Airport beginning December 21, 2019 and supplement a task order fund in the amount of $100,000 and zero cents and to ratify corporate environmental risk management LLC services from December 21, 2019 in accordance with in accordance with section 2-1163 of article 10 of the procurement and real estate code of the city of Atlanta code of ordinances and for other purposes and item number 3-20-01473 an ordinance by transportation committee establishing the fiscal year 2021 airport renewal and extension fund Airport Passenger Facility Charge Fund, Aviation Encumbrance Program Budget by transferring to an appropriations in the amount of $159,896,000.00 to provide funding for various projects at Hartsville Jackson Atlanta International Airport and for other purposes. Okay, council members, uh, you've heard the first reads. Uh, we will accept them into the record uh, if there are no objections. Um, seeing now, let's move forward to the rest of our agenda, the legislative items. Item number four, 201130, 
uh, excuse me, 2013-80, an ordinance by Transportation Committee authorizing the Chief Financial Officer or his designee to amend the FY 2020 General Government Capital Outlay Fund Budget on behalf of the Atlanta Department of Transportation by transferring between projects in the sum of $4,658,516.00 in transportation impact fees for use under FC-8552 traffic signal maintenance for the purpose of modernizing traffic signals, communication corridors, complete streets, and intersection improvement projects to increase roadway system capacity and further purposes. All right. Um, who is going to speak to this paper? Anyone from the administration? Uh, the Commissioner Rowan had requested that this item be held. Okay. All right. Uh, I make a motion to hold. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Oh. Okay. Had a motion by Dickens, a second by Brown. Let's vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. This item will be held. Okay. Our next okay. item is number five. 2014-35, an ordinance by Transportation Committee authorizing the mayor her designee on behalf of the city of Atlanta to enter into an agreement with the State Road and Tollway Authority to allow customers to use a peach pass to pay for parking at designated parking facilities at Hartsville Jackson Atlanta International Airport to authorize a term of up to two years to authorize the payment of settlement fees from parking revenue and for the purposes. All right, is Mr. Selden on the phone? Oh, no, it's yeah, well, I guess it could be him as well. Yeah. Who's speaking to this one? Mr. Selden from the airport? Or Mike or anybody from the airport? Oh, Selden is not on the line. So is there anyone from the airport on the line? I mean, this is pretty straightforward. I understand what it's about, but I mean, it is good to hear from the airport on their papers. Okay, let's do this. Uh, let's come back to this item. Ms. Pulandini, let's, let's go to item six and then we'll come back. Okay, item number 6, 2014-36, an ordinance by Transportation Committee to authorize the Chief Financial Officer to pay all outstanding invoices to Gallagher Asphalt Corporation for Cooperative Purchasing Agreement FC-9893, utilizing Norton Shores Muskegon contract number of BP-17-03 for a hot-in-place recycled asphalt program on behalf of the Department of Public Works in accordance with Section 2-1163 of Article 10, Procurement and Real Estate Code in an amount not to exceed $32,265.10, all invoices to be charged to and paid from the various fund department organization and account numbers and for other purposes. And there's an amendment in your packet which has the title of section 1163 and related subsections. Okay, so I want to do a couple of things. One is uh, I'm going to uh, let you know that the airport just called me on my other phone and they said they are muted somehow. Some They, they, they are unmuted on their personal phone computer phones or what have you, but somehow we have them muted. So if our technology team can make sure that the airport is unmuted as well as uh, any other administration member like Mr. Uh, Rowan. But right now I can make a motion to amend this paper. Um, is there a second? Second, Brown. Okay. So we have a motion and a proper second by Mr. Brown. Let's prepare the vote for the amendment. Vote is open. Vote is closed. 
Seven years, zero days, this item has been amended. Okay, let's hear from Mr. Rowan or someone um, regarding the uh, outstanding invoices for the Asphalt Corporation. Okay, uh, yes, sir. Alexander. This is Cotina Alexander with ACLGOP. I am back in FY17. We entered into a contract with Gallagher Asphalt to perform the hot in place recycled asphalt. That's the process where we take up the asphalt, mix it with a rejuvenation agent, and put it back down, then top it with a fresh coat of asphalt. During the process of that, because it was a co op and there were some delays to getting the POs and everything in place and payment of those POs, we ended up overpaying, well, over authorizing work in the amount of $32,265. And this um, piece of legislation allows us to, to settle out that contract and close out that contract with Gallagher Asphalt for all of the work that they did perform in FY17. Okay, um, I'll make a motion to approve as amended. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Okay, and actually, Ms. Uh, Pulandini, this is a, should this be recommended to FEC? I'm seeing some notes that someone is, because it's an outstanding invoice, or can it be, um, <clears throat> can it be uh, taken care of here in, in uh, transportation? I, I would recommend that you do this via two separate votes. So this vote will be to vote uh, to approve it as amended, and then if you could take a second vote to refer to FEC. Okay. All right, so, so we're already in the first vote to approve as amended uh, with me as the motioner and Brown as the seconder. Let's, let's go to that vote. Vote is open. Mr. Vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. This item is favorable as amended. All right. So now I make a motion that we refer this item to finance exec. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Second, West Wall. All right. We got a second by Brown. Vote is open. Vote is closed. Seven years, zero and eight. This item will be referred to Finance Executive Committee. Now, Ms. Pulandini, can we go back to that last airport paper now that the airport is uh, unmuted? Yes, Mr. Chair. Would you like me to reread the caption? No, it was so fresh. We all, well, no, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Item number five. Yeah. 2004-1435, an ordinance by Transportation Committee authorizing the mayor, her designee, on behalf of the city of Atlanta to enter into an agreement with the State Road and Tollway Authority to allow customers to use the Peach Pass to pay for parking at designated parking facilities at Hartsville-Jackson Atlanta International Airport to authorize a term of up to two years to authorize the payment of settlement fees from parking revenue and for the purposes. Okay. Now, do we have the airport on the phone? Good morning, Councilman Dickens. How are you, sir? John Selden, the General Manager of Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport. All right, welcome, welcome. I know you guys were on mute. You were reporting to duty as normal, but that's not how technology is in the way. So thank you for being here. Please tell us about the Peach Pass and the parking at the airport. Sure. So uh, we have been working with CERTA, the State Tell Road uh, Authority and um, they control Peach Pass, and uh, we are trying to implement, and we are implementing, a touchless, frictionless system at our ATL West Deck uh, out there when we open it, and uh, we plan on opening it, depending on demand, somewhere uh, late this fall, and uh, what the Peach Pass will do will allow you to uh, enter the garage, the gate will go up, we'll read your license plate, and then when you leave, you'll drive up to the gate, it'll open, and the fee will be paid by the Peach Pass. 
Um, CERTA is charging us uh, 5% uh, transaction for fee. 3% of that is the normal credit card fee, and 2% is uh, the fee that actually will go to CERTA, and that pays for the capital and investment and their service. Obviously, they'll run a line if you get a bill on your sir, on your peach pass that you uh, dispute. They'll be the ones to handle all of that, and they will send us the funds. Um, so this is a leading-edge technology that we're implementing in our West Deck. And then once it's successful there, we'll put it in Sullivan Road. And then finally, we plan on implementing it throughout the airport. Thank you. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Um, let me see if there are any questions. Yes, I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Over the street, second, second. Matt Kite. All right. Uh, Overstreet beats you out, Mr. Mastakai. So Overstreet gets the second. <laughs> so let's prepare a vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. This item is favorable. Next Number 7, 2014-46, an ordinance by Council Members Madeline M. Archibong and Carla Smith to amend the Atlanta City Atlanta Code of Ordinances, Part 2, General Ordinances, Chapter 138, Street Sidewalks and Other Public Places, Article 1 in general, Section 138-8, Street Name Changes, Dedication of Certain Public Places, B4E3, to establish fees for the renaming of certain streets to amend the Atlanta Code of Ordinances, Part 2, General Ordinances, Chapter 138, Street Sidewalks, and Other Public Places, Article 1 in general, Section 138-8, Street Name Changes, Dedication of Certain Public Places, B5C, to establish a threshold of community support for renaming street names and for other purposes. And there is a substitute in your packet which strengthens, excuse me, strengthens some of the whereas clauses, um, ties in the rationale behind the waiver to the work of the advisory committee report and also allows only residents to sign um, the petition for the name change. Okay, so I need to make a motion. So I make a motion to amend to add those changes. Is there a second? Excuse me, substitute. Second, Brown. Oh, it's a substitute. I'm sorry. I, I make yes. a motion to uh, bring forward a substitute. Second, Brown. Okay, let's bring, let's uh, vote to bring forward the substitute. Vote is open. Vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. This item, the substitute is now before you. Okay, and, and Madam, uh, so Ms. Pulandina, we don't have Archie Bong or Smith on the phone, do we? I'm just checking, Mr. Chair. No, Mr. Chair, they're not on the line. Okay. Um, so I make the motion to approve on substitute. Is there a second? Westmoreland. All right. There's a second by Westmoreland. Let's prepare a vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. This item is favorable on substitute. Our next item is number 8, 20R4061, a resolution by Council Members Madeline M. Archibong, Antonio Brown, Andre Dickens, Jennifer N. I., Amira Froki, and Michael Julian Bond, requesting the Department of Transportation Commissioner to create a participatory engagement process with the community to select a street where a permanent Black Lives Matter mural commissioned by members of the Atlanta City Council may be installed to commemorate, to commemorate the Black Lives Matter movement in the city of Atlanta and for other purposes. So I make a motion to approve. Uh, is there a second? Second, Brown. Okay. Um, Andre, yeah. can I speak to this before we yeah. we go into the yeah. vote? Sure. So, uh, colleagues, um, I mean, we're all familiar with what this paper is is requesting and and i believe uh commissioner rowan also wants to speak to this as well um you know we thought it was important that we really allow community the opportunity to weigh into the decision of 
where this mural or multiple murals could be placed throughout the city. Um, so we thought it would be a great idea to create a participatory process similar to that of which um, Councilmember Faroki created around his participatory budgeting. Um, and Councilmember Archibong truly led the efforts around this legislation and moving it forward um, and ensuring that we had an equitable process. So kudos to Councilmember Archibong uh, for making this happen and to all of the colleagues that signed on. So thank you, Chairman Dickens. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for your comments on that, Mr. Brown. Um, and uh, I know if, uh, I asked earlier if Ms. Archibald was on the phone because I know she had a couple of pieces of legislation, but I know she's occupied right now. Um, but, yeah, kudos to her. Kudos to everybody that signed on to this. Uh, next speaker is Mr. Faroki. Yeah, thank you, Chairman Day, because I just wanted to add that fully in support of, of this and I'm glad to see us seek a permanent installation uh, um, to recognize the Black Lives Matter movement, I will note, uh, in I think appropriate civil disobedience, uh, two have already been installed. They both happen to be in my district line, the Belt Line, the one on Edgewood. Uh, but glad to see us move to do something permanently. Thank you, Mr. Baroki. Uh, I heard, the, I knew about the one on the Belt Line. Where was the other one that you mentioned? Uh, the other one sits on Edgewood between Jackson and Boulevard. Oh, okay. I have not seen that. Okay, let's check that out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker is Ms. Overstreet. Um, thank you, Chair uh, Dickens. Uh, you know, I am. Um, I'm excited about this particular uh, legislation, and it seems that uh, I, I was going to actually mention that I saw um, the one on the Beltline already. And it just seems like it's the right thing to do at this time. So um, I'm looking forward to the process, and I'm so glad that um, that we're doing it in a participatory uh, fashion so that the whole community gets to uh, be involved so that this could be a part of our healing as a city, just to um, really um, work together on something that's so meaningful. So thank you. Yes, no, thank you for your comments, Ms. Overstreet. Um, so this is good. We are, um, you know, and I really am glad that, uh, as you said, Ms. Overstreet, and as you said, Mr. Brown, <clears throat> a participatory process, um, and Mr. Faroki, your leadership in our participatory budgeting leads the way for this kind of process. So uh, one thing is building off of another, so uh, this is good. So I have made the motion, and and I think we have. Uh, do we have a second already? I can't remember. Was it Brown, or was it Matt? It, it was, was Brown. Brown. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead on and prepare the vote. The vote is open. Vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. This item is favorable. Okay. Items nine and ten are resolutions requesting traffic studies. Would the committee like to take these together? Yes, ma'am. Item number nine, 20 R4062, a resolution by Councilmember Andrea L. Boone requesting the Commissioner of the Atlanta Department of Transportation to conduct a traffic study of Hemp Hill School Road Northwest and for the purposes. And item number 10, 20 R4063, a resolution by Councilmember Andrea L. Boone requesting the Commissioner of the Atlanta Department of Transportation to conduct a traffic study of Lake Valley Road Northwest and for other purposes. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Over street, second. Okay. Thank you. We have uh, Brown. Actually, uh, Mr. Rowan, did you want to chime in on this? Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, on the traffic studies? Yeah, is that anything you want to add? No, we we will we will conduct those traffic studies as, as requested. Okay, all right, thank you. So, so we have a motion uh, by Dickens and a second, I think, by West. Uh, West no, that was uh, Over Street. One moment, please. 
Sollte das sein? Code is closed, seven years, there are nays, these items are favorable. Our next item is number 11, 20R4064, a resolution by council members Natalina Marchabon and Amir R. Faroki to install a mural in the public right-of-way along Auburn Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia, 3303, to affirm the proud history of African Americans in the city of Atlanta and for the purpose. And a substitute was emailed to the committee at 9.26 a.m. The substitute modifies the legislation to create a process for the creation of a mural or multiple murals on Auburn Avenue and that the location, message, and artist shall be determined by December 31st. It also states that costs associated with the installation of the potentially multiple murals will be authorized via separate legislation. Okay. Motion to approve. Brown? All right. Is Second. Okay. So motion by Brown, taking it by Faroki. Let's prepare the vote. Uh, just for clarification, the, the motion here is to bring forth the substitute. Oh, <laughs> yes, uh, motion to bring forth. So the substitute, the, the motion is by Brown and the second is by uh, Faroki on bringing forth the substitute. The vote is up, guys. So, Over street, yes. I had to step away from my terminal. Code is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. The substitute is now before you. Right. I, I, and I make a motion to approve or substitute. Is there a second? Second, second for Brown. All right, we had a second by Faroki. Over Street, yes. Code is open. Court is closed, seven years, zero and eight, this item is favorable and substitute. And, and, and Ms. Pulandini, I, I neglected to, I mean, way at the top of the agenda, Ms. Ide has been here for the whole time and I have not introduced her. It just dawned on me, uh, she has voted in every vote. She was here in the very beginning uh, and we did not introduce her. So I apologize to Ms. Ide. Uh, she has been on the phone the whole time. Um, just, we just skipped her. So. My apologies, Ms. I. She has been here the whole time. So, uh, and voted on all items. So, my apologies. Thank you. We'll go to the next item, Ms. Pulley. Number 12, 20R4113, a resolution by Transportation Committee to correct resolution number 19R4739, adopted by the Atlanta City Council on October 21, 2019, and approved by operation of law on October 30, 2019, for the purpose of correcting the agreement number listed therein authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to remit payment to CSX Transportation, Inc. for the installation of an aerial fiber optic cable in, on, or at Howell Mill Road over the railway for the traffic communication corridor project. All right, Mr. Rowan. Uh, yes, sir, Chairman Dickens. This is, this is a, a, a little bit of cleanup on our behalf. In our previous resolution, we had referenced the, the incorrect CSX agreement. And we are we are uh, correcting that that item. Okay. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Councilman second, Brown. Brown. Second. Okay. We got a second by Brown. Board is open. Over Street. Yes. Code is closed. Seven years, zero and eight. This item is favorable. Item number 13, 20R4114, a resolution by Transportation Committee authorizing the mayor, her designee, to exercise contract renewal option number three with SOCO TEM JV for FC8250 annual contract for the maintenance and repair of sidewalks, curbs, driveway aprons, and associated infrastructure on behalf of the Department of Public Works for time only and for the purposes. Okay, let's go to Mr. Rowan. I'm 
start with that. Christina well, Alexander, um, ACLDOT. This oh, yeah. is, um, this is um, a renewal of one of our annual sidewalk contractors for FY21 um, for the repair of driveways, sidewalks, and curbs. This is just for time only. We have not assigned money with, well, we have, we're assigning an amount not to exceed $1 million for this contract for FY21. Okay. Um, this, I, I think, is this the last renewal? Uh, renewal this number is, three, or yes, this is the last renewal that we have for this contractor. The other contractor is all out of renewal, so we will be going to procurement. We actually have a trigger package that's ready to go down really soon to ask for two additional annual sidewalk contracts. So. The timing of us going to procurement is going to give us enough time to complete this in a year, complete procurement in a year, and have some a new contract in place, right? We can get all this done in a year, right? Yeah, we're so hopeful hope. that we'll be able to have um, to get the procurement process completed within a year and have a new contractor on board for FY22. Okay. All right, motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, Brian. Second, what's going on? We had a second by Brown. Let's prepare our vote. Vote is open. Over Street, yes. Yeah. Westmoreland, yes. Vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. This item is favorable. One thing I'll ask, Ms. Alexander, so that we can kind of get a, council members can get a good idea of what this pre these previous contracts have delivered to us, meaning let's say you got this three-year contract and it has delivered X number of feet of sidewalk repairs, X number of feet of curb repairs, X number of feet of aprons. Can you guys do a breakdown of that so that, you know, as we go into the next contract, we will know sort of a dollar per Square feet or linear feet of work. I mean, just to kind of get a general average. If, if, am, am I making any sense, Ms. Alexander? Yes, we can actually provide you a breakdown of what has been performed under each contract in each fiscal year. So we can definitely give you that information. Yeah, good. And I mean, so the the, the denominator and numerator are important. So if you can give us um, how much how many square feet of these things and how much money it is and then divide it out. So we'll see, okay, just on average, this is how much we get done by these contracts, um, which gives us when we approve the next contract, hopefully we can get more feet of sidewalk and stuff done for the same dollar amount or, or less. Um, so, okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Is that everything? That's all the current mm -hmm. legislative items. And now we're waiting on the walk-in, or do we have some held items in the school and um, Actually, we do not have the held item anymore, but we do have the walk-in legislation. The administration informed me they have an updated version, um, which I have not received yet. I, it just sent it. It hasn't hit my inbox yet. Would the committee like to hold? for a couple minutes so I can forward to them? Yes, if you can, let me see my inbox and see if we received it yet. Uh, I have not received it yet either. Uh, one moment, please. I, I just received it. I'm just um, putting it into an email for you all, if you wouldn't mind holding one second.
Right. Mr. Chair, it was just sent, um, and I can go ahead and I will go ahead and read in the caption. Well, first, let's uh, let's make sure each council member is able to see it. Council members, check your email. I'm checking mine. Did you just forward it to us, uh, Julia, or did yes. the administration? Yes, Mr. Chair. I just okay. That's I just sent it. Mine just came. Oh, it, uh, my apologies. I say it. I, I sent the wrong document. If you could just hold one more second. It should have just hit your inboxes now. Okay. And I will read the caption. A resolution by Transportation Committee authorizing the mayor her designee to amend the concessions agreement and or consolidated rental car facility lease agreements to extend rental payment relief effective July 1, 2020 for a period of 12 months ending on June 30th, 2020, to address future rent reduction due to decreased employment and to suspend parking fees for up to 400 concessions permit holders from July 1, 2020, for a period of 12 months, ending on June 30th, 2021, at Hartsville-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, in response to the continued effects of the COVID-19 pandemic crisis and for the purposes. All right. Um, so we we have this uh, walk-in before us. Uh, I have communicated with members of the administration already on this item, and I am in support, but I did want, uh, because it's a walk-in for the, for the uh, clarification of the public and for the public record and for council members, uh, who's on the line from the administration or the airport that can discuss this item um, in detail? Uh, John Selden, the general manager of Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport. Okay, Mr. Selden. Sure. So um, our uh, passengers right now, we are down 80% from where we were in 2019, June of 2019. Um, the, we were down as low as 97% in April. We have a very slow recovery going on. We have numerous concourses closed. And because of that, um, we would like to extend uh, the suspension of the MAG from July 1st of 2020 to June 30th, 2021. Um, we expect a very slow recovery, and by providing this relief, we will help our concessionaires uh, by just charging them the percentage rent, which will enable them to bring their businesses back in. We have over 300 stores closed and bring their employees back. So this resolution contains three items. The first is the MAG suspension till June 30th, 2021. The next item is at the, when we complete the MAG suspension, we will look back 12 months and whatever the percentage rent that was paid by each concessionaire will be their MAG going forward. That's number two. The third item is we have 10 um, concessionaire contractors that um, were on a payment plan we suspended that um, when we suspended the MAG, but when we reinstate the MAG, those 10 uh, companies will have to start their repayment plan. The fourth issue is we've suspended parking for our concessionaires that have parking passes, and there's almost 400 of them for a year. And the fifth item is um, we have adjusted our leases, say when the employments drop 25%, uh, the current leases, when the employment in the concourse is dropped 25%, we adjust the MAG uh, based on that drop. So in other words, if their 
if their employments in their concourses drop 26 percent, we would lower the mag 26 percent. To make the mag more relative to conditions in the concourses, we would like to adjust that to a 15 percent trigger for the adjustment in the mag going forward. Those are the five items in this resolution. Thank you. Good. Thank you, um, Mr. Selden. Uh, Council members, as you all are aware, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we we all agreed uh, to the resolution I put forth to give them till till now uh, to to give concessionaires a break on rent till now, and um, we didn't at that time know how long the pandemic was going to last. So, um, as you see, that, uh, you know the employments are still down. Uh, Eighty percent, and the challenges still persist. Um, so this is a way to now do it for another year. Uh, Delta and others have have already done their projections to say that uh, you know this is necessary. We we put an extension to Delta on certain gates as well. Delta and other airlines, not just Delta. But uh, so I see this as appropriate to suspend the, the rent, uh, but the mag. I, I'm really glad that the MAG part is um, is following that you're going to lower MAG according to um, employment, so that it's consistent for everyone. Um, and so, if we do get an increase, if it does, come, if, if uh, travel comes back, then you have that ability there as well. So it's kind of a going along economic trends. So I, I, I like that component of it, too. Uh, there's a speaker in Mr. line. Chair. Uh -huh. Mr. Chair, this is Vivica Brown from the city's law department. I wanted to yes. uh, clarify a couple of items, if I may. Yes, you may. Okay. Um, and Mr. Selden uh, may not have this information. It was just recently revised. Uh, with regard to... Um, additional items, there will be a waiver of the storage fees as well as the marketing fees uh, during that 12-month period. And with regard to the ongoing percentage rent, the percentage rent will be reduced uh, in, to correlate with the reduction in employment um, and that will be triggered at 15% instead of 25%. Thank you for that. Um, the, the second part, I think he, he did make clear. The first part um, was, in a, it was a, a great addition that came about over the last two days, and I appreciate the law department and all that worked on that, which is to, you know, uh, concessionaires and others have storage and a marketing share as well, and those are also going to be a part of this suspension. So thank you uh, for for highlighting that point as well. Was there someone else from the administration trying to speak? Because I'm, I have council members uh, that I'm going to go to next. Is there someone else from law, finance, or airport? No? Okay. Mr. Mathekite. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Uh, just wanted to say that, that I, I support this fully, and uh, I really do like the point that you brought up with um, sort of a sliding scale of, um, you, you know, how much support we give the, the uh, concessionaires depending on where traffic is and, and how many people are in the airport. I think that's appropriate. Uh, this is a balancing act. And I think that we need to um, consider the, the certainly the concessionaires, but also the airport uh, in this equation as well. And obviously, that's part of the city. So, again, I support this. Um, I, I like the idea of scaling the amount of support to the amount of uh, recovery and traffic that are in the uh, concourses. So, uh, I do want to support this, but but just want to raise the point that. You know, this is a balancing act as we look to um, uh, have this uh, continue to monitor this going forward. We'll just have to to see where traffic is. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Mathakai. Very good point. Um, next, we have uh, Mr. Westmoreland. Hello, Mr. Westmoreland. Okay. So you must be on mute, Mr. Westmoreland. I was, but I have been unmuted. Here I am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mathakai. I agree with uh, the comments that you just made as well. Mr. Selden, can you talk a little bit about, I understand that um, given the uh, precipitous drop in passengers that there's not a lot of money being made, period. What What is the financial impact of this action? Um, and then talk a little bit about the CARES funding that we have and how you see um, I guess as you look out over the last, over the next 12 months, how you feel about that money being able to kind of keep us whole or keep us moving in the black, so to speak. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, this is uh, Greg Richardson. Unfortunately, John stepped away for a second. Um, That's okay. Hey, Mr. Richardson. Hey, how are you? So um, as it relates to the financial uh, impact that has been you know, when we presented the budget, our expectation for fiscal 21 was that we would go to a percentage rent of, of gross revenues for the concessionaires. So we effectively factored in uh, a suspension of the MAG continuing for the fiscal year. So, so everything we presented um, anticipates, you know, the revenues coming back sort of in correlation with uh, the passenger growth that we also anticipate over the course of fiscal 21. So, so we've anticipated really that change that's being made right now as it relates to the percentage rent suspension or the MAG suspension for fiscal uh, 21. And as it relates to the CARES, I mean, effectively what we've done is, you know, in the, in the evaluation as we presented in the budget, you know, the overall impact of what the revenue reductions are in both concessions as well as parking and the rental car, um, factoring all of that in, we've identified that we would utilize you know, about $100 million of CARES money in fiscal 21 as uh, reimbursement of expenses, which is how it's, it's defined to be used, but that ensures that we meet the uh, financial metrics that we had in place uh, for a uh, master bond ordinance perspective. Good deal. Um, talk a little about airlines. What, if any, conversations have you had with them as you've been working on this particular piece of legislation and what impact, if any, do you think they'll fear or do they think they'll fear? Have they been a part of the conversation at all? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the airlines themselves um, are aware that, you know, this conversation has been going on, you know, specific to the MAG reduction. They recognize that, you know, that, that, that suspending the MAG hopefully ensures that the concessioners will come back sooner rather than later and therefore yeah. the revenues will be generated. Uh, the reality is we do share right now 70% of the revenues of concessions with the airlines. So, yeah. so they are incented to, you know, incentivized to want that, that number to come back. And so they want to have that balanced approach in which we've presented as well. So, so they are in agreement with, um, you know, this MAC approach as we go forward for fiscal 21. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Is that... All right, Mr. Uh, that concludes Mr. Westmoreland. Now let's go to Ms. Overstreet. Thank you, Chair Dickens. Um, yeah, just wanted to make sure I weighed in, wanted everyone to understand that I really am supportive of this um, walk-in legislation. And also, I had a good conversation with um, the execs of Delta uh, Airlines uh, yesterday, and no one is um, very, it, no, everyone is is uh, very measured in the way that they are approaching uh, a rebound for our airport. And even when we speak of a rebound, because we were so robust and, and doing so well as an airport in just February of 2020, um, no one sees this bounce back happening quickly. Everyone is being very measured because they are looking uh, no sooner than three years of, um, of this 
you know, just being back to where they think is a really good place footing, and that still would not bring them to where they were in February, which, you know, I, I, I'm not asking that we do that, but I just want us to all stay uh, mindful that the state of Georgia really depends on us getting this right, um, because this is not just, you know, the world's busiest and most efficient airport, but it is our number one revenue generator for the whole state. And we, we employ the most um, people uh, throughout the state. And Delta is our number one business. So uh, Delta Airlines, and so it is important that we really do uh, continue to monitor these. I'm glad it is on a sliding scale. Um, and I'm certainly glad that um, this legislation takes into account um, the importance of uh, concessionaires and in our parking and, and things that really are a byproduct of whether or not people are actually coming to fly. And so as confidence builds up uh, with people ready to get back on the airplanes and uh, people ready to uh, get back into the airline industry period um, and the city opens, uh, I expect for us to continue to monitor where we are with all of this. And I think everyone feels that that is fair. Um, so um, just glad to see that we're, we're not expecting anything that to just change overnight or in 12 months or 24 months. You know, we really do have to stay measured in our approach uh, for the sake of, you know, being prudent with our state. Uh, Jim, the city of Atlanta uh, really has had a long-standing uh, good relationship with not only all of the airlines, but just the way we do our business for the airport. And I just expect us to do, you know, no different. So thank you for uh, communicating with us <clears throat> the details of this walk-in um, before um, the the pre, the presentation today, um, so that we'll have time to do our homework and and research and, and figure out you know what really is best for the city. So let's just continue with this communication and continue to stay measured in the way that we're really handling our gym. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Overstreet. Uh, those are very well received. Um, I'm sure. Uh, I definitely receive it. I'm sure the administration and all the public understands how difficult it is. So thank you for that. Um, let's go on to the next speaker, which is Antonio Brown. Mr. Thank Brown. you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Thank you. Um, so is Mr. Selden on the line with us, and is also the law department on the line with me? Mr. Selden is here, Councilman Brown. Hey, Mr. Selden. So I have a few questions, and, and maybe we need to go back and forth with the law department. Um, I want to speak specifically to the concessionaire contracts, um, uh, specifically the the contracts that have already been on a uh, that, that have been on a month to month extension for the last five years. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to understand. Why, why would we continue to extend these contracts an additional three years if they've already been on month to month for the last five? And why aren't we just specifically focusing on the new contracts that are in the middle of the term um, that, that really need this assistance? Because, you know, we, we've had contracts that have, you know, we've been extending and, and, and doing month to month on. And, you know, I'm, I'm just not sure how fair this is with us focusing, uh, just uh, you know, just giving every fitting everyone into this same um, consortment and and giving everyone an additional uh, three year extension. So can can you can you explain that to me? Sure, Councilman Brown. So we are uh, proposing a three year extension um, for numerous reasons, and and many of them have to do with the inability to get new concessionaires out on the terminal in the con condition, financial conditions we are in right now. 
Um, we are down 80%. If you were to go get financing at a bank for a construction loan, I think you would find it very difficult. Um, secondly, we need to ensure that we keep the concessionaires that we have during this time. Um, and if we, their, their leases were uh, expired and they left the facility, we would have a very difficult time getting out RFPs. One, because of the, the lack of passengers. Two, because of the um, very difficult loan situation. Three, we don't expect our traffic and the international traffic on Concourse E and F to be back for, for a minimum three years. We're hoping our, in, our domestic traffic starts to really ramp back up here uh, to get to 70, 80, 90 percent, probably in about two, and a, two to two and a half years. So we thought three years was the uh, preferable extension. That way, at the two-year point, at 24 months, we can look a year out and go, we think we can go forward with RFPs because it'll take us almost a year from the time we start the RFP process to the time we get new concessionaires in there. So due to the financial situation and due to the ability for the individuals right now that have concessions going on that um, they need to amortize in their investment, we're, 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 saying, we're proposing a three-year extension. And that is in sister so, in yeah. <laughs> Mr. Selden, so as, as much as I appreciate the purpose of this legislation, and I, I truly support it. Everything that you just mentioned, I completely understand. Um, what, what Again, my question is specific to why are we, why are we creating this consortment where we're treating every contractor as the same? And the re reason why I ask that is because, you know, I appreciate the three-year extension, um, you know, for our new contracts that are in the middle of the term, I can recognize and appreciate that. But you have older contracts that have already been extended for five years, and they've realized their return on investment many times over. So I can't support uh, giving a three-year extension to all the contracts, um, you know, because of this situation, especially when the older contracts have already been, you know, I mean, I mean, you're talking about folks that have been in this in, 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 in this airport and have seen a return time and time over. So I would support a one-year extension for the older contracts and a three-year extension for the newer contracts, and I'll explain to you why. You know, one, so we, before Mr. you... Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, Mr. Brown, this is uh, Councilman Dickens. Uh, I actually appreciate what you're saying. The only thing I'll say is that that item is not the current item that's before us. We are just okay. talking about the one, right now we're just talking about the one year rent suspension for all uh, airport related concessions and parking and rental cars to, to suspend the rent for people that are currently operating at the airport. I know what you're talking about, which is the three year extension, which I'm thankful for your conversation on. That paper is a paper that actually is going to be heard in finance exec because they are asking to waive the procurement code. So it has to go to finance and it's no longer really a transportation paper. So we can discuss that paper Got you. After, Got after we dispense of this paper related to the one year extension. Um, but I didn't want you to get that, you know, because I, I know what you're talking about and you're on you're on to something, but um, just wanted you to know that we're still on that, just that current item. Oh, yo, so sorry. Thank Council you. Member, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Council Member Brown and Council Member Dickens. Member. This is Vivica Brown from the Department of Law. Um, I just wanted to clarify that we are taking the uh, recommendation and the advisement um, under council right now. We've, we've not made a decision on uh, the three-year move forward. Um, I just wanted to be sure that, that you all knew that. Don't believe that will be brought up in finance committee today. Thank well, you thank so much, you. Vivica. Thank you, Vivica, for that. Um, I appreciate you guys for uh, taking some time on that. Um, so thank you, and we can talk later about that. Mr. Brown, uh, did you want to uh, conclude what you were saying about the current paper, or? Yes, uh, I'm, in, I'm in full support. <laughs> okay. 
right. Good deal. All right, good. Thank you. Let's go to Mr. Faroki. Thank you, uh, Chairman Dickens. Um, Chairman Manager Sullivan, I just have one question. You may have clarified this earlier, so if you have, I apologize for asking. This one-year um, time period that setting aside NAG payments or putting them on a sliding scale, um, will any other stakeholders in the airport um, be asked to pick up some of the slack from the lost revenue from concessions or parking lost revenue. And I, I say that, I guess, one example, would airlines be expected to help close the gap, or are we just leaving the airport swallowing the, the revenue loss? So, uh, oh. Mr. Faroki, I think Mr. Richards or, uh, or Mr. Richardson or Mr. Sheldon kind of uh, talk a little bit about that. Are, are you either of you on the phone now? Yes, sir. John Selden is on the phone. Um, the airlines uh, receives uh, right now currently 70% uh, of the concessions rent. So in a sense, uh, they are going to receive 70% less revenue from the concessionaires here uh, because, uh, now again, they're going to get percentage rent, but the mag is reduced so they're, they're going to get of the money that's made and last in april we made uh normally april of 19 we we grossed uh we made uh 50 million dollars in concessions rent this year we only had uh 4.8 million and we split that with the airlines so the, it's a revenue stream not an expense stream um the airlines will receive less revenue they will not have to pay for other things we plan on using cares money to replace our revenue stream that would uh, norm that we would normally use this concession money for. Terrific, thank you. That's all I have. Okay, good deal. Thanks, Mr. Faroki. Mr. Westmoreland, I see your hand is raised. It is, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was talking with Ms. Pulladini. Since this um, paper is basically an extension of the one that we adopted that serves from March to June. We had an amendment um, in that paper. We added a whereas clause and then a therefore be a result clause that spoke to um, the our employees basically experiencing reduced hours of work and, and a loss in wages and that part of the reason we were doing the suspension of the MAG was to recognize that by doing so, these businesses would be more likely to be able to keep employees on, which would allow employees to keep earning money. Um, and so I was going to ask the body whether, since this is basically extending the last resolution that we put in, if we just use the exact same language um, that we had last time um, by adding a whereas clause and then by adding a via further resolve clause that said literally the same thing that it did last time. Um, just as a recognition to why, in addition to helping these businesses, that will also help the employees who work for those businesses. So I was working with Ms. Pulidini to get that on an amendment form um, that she could then send around. Mr. Westmoreland, that's a great idea. Uh, I'm in support of that. That um, I actually am... Uh, I wish we had uh, that already in there um, to, to line up with the other paper. And I don't know if uh, anyone else has any comments about it, but I definitely would be in support of that amendment um, as Ms. Pulandini writes it. Are there any comments from the law department or the airport related to that amendment regarding employment? This is Vivica Brown from the law department. Um, I'm not certain that I know exactly what provision we're talking about. Will the amendment be sent over for us to take a look at? Happy to send it over. I, I'll read you what we had last time. I'm literally just suggesting that we take the same words that we adopted in the resolution on March 18th and add them into this one. The whereas clause says, whereas the recommended public health measures in response to stopping the spread of COVID-19 are severely impacting businesses throughout the country and as a result, employees are experiencing reduced hours of work and ultimately a loss in wages in the city of Atlanta, authorizing a suspension of the minimum annual guarantee for its concession and car rental lease agreements will allow airport businesses to stay open during this pandemic and pay their trained and able employees. And then the whereas clause says, be it further resolved that this action is being taken to assist employees who are experiencing reduced 
reduced hours of work and ultimately a loss in wages. The city of Atlanta authorizing the suspension of the minimum annual guarantee for its concessions and car rental lease agreements will allow airport business to stay open during the pandemic and pay and train their able employees. So it has a whereas clause, very similar language, is a resolved clause, and both of them are pulled word for word from what we approved on March 17th. That sounds that sounds wonderful. That sounds perfectly fine. I do have one thing that um, I wanted to clarify. This legislation only relates to the non-car rental company concessions. Um, the car rental concessions and its release will come under a separate paper. Um, there are some additional considerations with regard to the car rental companies, um, and so we anticipate bringing that separate. Got it. So would it be better to be consistent with the with the concessionaires and or car rental company rental agreements that's in the yeah, you, current you would, resolve clause? Yeah, yeah um, we want to make sure you have the right legislation. There should be a removal of any reference to car rental companies in the legislation that you have before you. And I'm not sure that you have that one, but there shouldn't be any reference to car rental companies. I still have the email we got at 10:22 does still mention car rental companies in throughout the legislation. Okay. Um, I'm happy to to remove that for you. Just so we're clear, uh, Ms. Pulandina did just send over. A uh, version of the amendment that Mr. Westmoreland uh, has suggested. Ms. Pulandini, are you on the line? Did you send it over to Vivica as well? Yes, Mr. Chair. I copied Ms. Um, Brown on the email. Ms. Brown. So, so Ms. Brown, you have the amendment. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Ms. Pulandini, are you, I mean, because my screen no longer shows the actual current legislation, um, uh, the, the legislation that we're voting on right now, as it is written, does it mention rental cars? Because I know there's a couple of versions that are out there. So I'm trying to, trying to make sure that the version that we're about to adopt, does it say rental cars? One moment, I'm just confirming. Yes, the version um, that was sent at 1022, which is all before you, does reference uh, rental car facility and rental car okay. um, rental payment. So Ms. Brown, we will need to if if you're if what you're saying is true regarding rental cars needing to have their own separate legislation, perhaps yeah. you remove all language related to rental cars and uh, either substitute or we would amend it to take that. So, w what's your recommendation on that? Um, it needs to be done quickly if you're going to take action today. And I'm, I'm happy to do that. I just don't know whether I can do it as quickly as you need to. It just needs to remove any reference to car rental lease agreements. And, and just, just so that for further clarification, we have a couple of car rental companies that are in bankruptcy and we need to take a look at the release just so that we are clear on how we move forward. Um, give me a, if you can give me a kind of just a back of the napkin guess at how long it will take you to clean this up. Um, we do Probably have five minutes. Oh, five minutes. Um, oh, we have a MARTA presentation, don't we, Ms. Pulanini? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, so what we'll do is let's go to MARTA. Uh, let's, let's get our MARTA presentation. And then that'll, that'll give Ms. Brown time to get us what we need. Um, I, I have and, a question right quick, uh, Council Member uh, okay. Dickens. Yes. Yeah, yes. just so, so now that they're researching, I want to make sure they're, you know, getting it all together. But in the original legislation that we did for um, uh, waiving the MAG for these three months, 
uh, did it was it all included there? The the um, parking and and everything. Yes, the previous included rental cars um, mm -hmm. and, and concessions, uh, but yeah, and I'm not totally clear of the difference because that's what I was going to put in there. But yes, and that's yeah. that's my question. I, I just want to know what the difference is. Uh, just just wondering. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm supportive. I just want to understand, um, you know, why is this one different? And also, want to while she's researching research marketing and uh, everything because we want to make sure that the legislation is sound once we vote on it today. Yes, very good point, Ms. Overstreet. Uh, we Thanks. need to vote on a, a, a complete paper and an explanation for the difference. So, um, we, what, what, uh, and, and I'm glad you set the stage for that so that they'll look at everything, Ms. Overstreet. So, Ms. Brown, we'll come back to you. Um, we'll go to Marta. But, Ms. Pulandini, have we, we haven't made a motion or anything on that paper, the uh, walk in paper, right? No, Mr. Chairman. We don't need, Okay, so there's no there's no paper, there's no motion. So the walk in can be let's just scrap it and they give us something brand new. So that, there's no action taken so far. So the walk in still remains basically unwalked in because <laughs> we haven't taken action on it. Um, so yes, that's correct. We'll come back with a we'll come back with a whole fresh new paper. Include the language that Mr. Westmoreland wants to be added from our previous legislation re regarding employees. Take out the rental car stuff and explain why. Um, and so all that can be done in a whole fresh new paper by the administration and the law department. All right, so let's go, uh, Pulandini, let's get ready for our uh, Marta presentation. Who do we have on the call? We have Mr. Jeffrey Parker, and if you hold one minute, we'll pull up the presentation. Okay. Mr. Chair, we don't see anybody from MARTA on the line. I've had some text messages with some MARTA people. Um, maybe they're on mute. Let's see. Mm. Hello, anyone from Marta on the phone? They say they're on the line. Um, let's see. Uh, um, they're on mute. Line unmuted. They have access to the, to the right number. Okay. I, I'm communicating with the Chief of Staff, Ms. Mullinex. <laughs> so if you have her number, supply her with the correct number to call in on. Yeah? No, this is Frank, Frank Rucker. Oh, okay. uh, Frank. Hey, Councilman. Uh, let me, uh, Jeff is on the line. He's actually trying to get in. Let me just take him back and see. I actually dialed into a number that was on the instructions. Let me go find him and see, see if he want to use the sum. So I'm going back on mute.
think while while we are in a period of waiting on things, um, I just you know wanted to in a non transportation related comment. Uh, we we uh, and we usually deal with these on council Mondays, um, the full council. There's a a man that passed away yesterday, uh, Mr. James Allen. He was a uh, Atlanta Housing Authority commissioner. Uh, he's 89 years young, and uh, he passed away. He lived in uh, Atlanta Housing um, Senior High Rise, the High Tower Manor. He's a church member of my church. I know a number of members of council have talked to Mr. Allen, and Mr. Allen has talked to all of us. Um, Mr. Allen used to come to our meetings, uh, particularly those items, of course, related to housing, but also sometimes related to transportation and seniors as they have to, you know, walk on these sides and cross the street. Yep, yep, Mr. Uh, Mr. Parker. Is that you, Mr. Parker? That is me. Okay. Well, I'm glad you guys are here. Give me one second. I was, uh, yeah, take your time. I was making sure. Uh, I just relayed to the public. Uh, my condolences and uh, the, the, the heartfelt loss that I feel uh, to uh, the loss of a great Atlanta, Mr. James Allen, yesterday, who's the commissioner of uh, Atlanta Housing Authority, and you know, long time Atlanta war veteran and friend to many. He would always come to council and give us advice, and, you know, and, and let, let let his word be known. Um, in a great way, in a receptive way. I know uh, I've seen tributes to him on social media by Matt Westmoreland and others that are on this committee. So a uh, tip of the hat to him, uh, and I just, you know, just want to have that said while we had a free moment in there. Um, Matt, I see you raised your hand. Did you want to speak? Or is this no, 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 that's, right. that's a holdover from the amendment. Apologies. But okay. Beautiful words. Yeah, yeah, I know you. You were good with you were really close with him as well, Mr. Masakai, Is your hand raised uh, from a previous or um, something? Yeah, else? it was a previous. So um, again, thank you for those words, Chair. Okay. Good, thank you. All right, now we can move forward. I think we have people on the line. It's uh, Mr. I'm Mr. here, General Manager. Okay, Mr. Parker. Thank okay, you. Good. Sorry, I was. I could hear. Line muted. Can you hear me now? It's I'm hearing it's muted and then unmuted. So I'm not sure. Can you hear me, Chairman, now? Okay, my line just got unmuted and your line is unmuted. So I think we're good. Move on. Let's go. Can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh good. Okay. Uh thank you, uh Chairman Dickens and, and uh, members of the City Council, it's uh, glad to be speaking to you and, and now being heard. Um, I want to thank uh, my, my board members who are uh, on the line. Um, I know our our Chair Frida Hartage and uh, uh, board member from Atlanta, Robbie Ash, have joined in, so I appreciate their support. Um, I also want to thank the City Council uh, and the City of Atlanta for their continued partnership and their support of the 15th Amendment, how important that uh, has been and continues to be to, uh, to MARTA in the region. Next slide, please. Are the, are the slides up? I still see the... Uh, um, as they're bringing the slides up, I'll, I'll continue. Uh, the agenda today, we're going to talk about the uh, More Marta uh, Capital Program and how it's advancing, our State of Good Repair Program, uh, the TOD uh, Program, as well as our Art Found Program, our Marta Ridership Initiative, and the 2021 Budget. Um, Chairman, can you hear me and can you see the uh, my slide deck? Yes, yes, uh, yes to both. Okay. All right, my uh, computer must have frozen and not seeing the... Uh... Okay, so uh, page three, advancing the more MARTA capital program. Uh, if you could advance to page four. Uh, we've been engaging with the uh, city on a governance plan to make sure that uh, uh, all of the uh, relationships and goals are put in and, uh, and, and uh, governance uh, terms are put in place to make sure that the, that the program can be advanced um, 
and this uh, provides some significant oversight to uh, to to uh, MARTA by the City of Atlanta. Um, it should be noted that projects uh, that will take place on the Beltline will have a separate um, agreement, a project level agreement with the Beltline for the execution of those projects. And this slide here just gives you a level of detail um, of, uh, of, of what goes into the governance plan. Uh, slide five, please. I think this is the more important uh, process part. And, and we've, uh, we've broken down uh, projects into phases, uh, initiation, planning, final design, and implementation. The projects that we're working on now are all either in the initiation or planning phase. And this lays out um, a description of the phase but also uh, whether or not MARTA or the city of Atlanta is leading or supporting the initiative. So uh, a lot of details have gone into this. Um, it will be uh, uh, voted on by the MARTA board of directors and then ultimately brought to the city council for uh, your concurrence. So we look forward to moving that along. Uh, next slide, please. So let's go to the FY21 priority projects. Um, we're going to talk through the projects. And I know there was a lot of uh, public comment about the, uh, uh, the, the, the legislation that was read today. Um, I want to assure you, and, and I know uh, you all know, that, that I am personally committed and the agency is committed to public participation. We continue that. And as, and as I review these projects, we will, um, we will um, advance, uh, summarize what sort of public participation has been ongoing and will continue. But when it comes to the specific legislation, um, you know, we did see this on, on Thursday, uh, have, have reviewed it. Um, I just want to share that, you know, although it's critically important that we do get this legislation through, uh, we also need to include enforcement of, uh, of, of lanes so that they can work efficient efficiently but if there is uh you know a need to delay um uh, a, a vote on this this is completely understandable and, and and not urgent yet although it will become urgent as we advance these projects so as you know critically important to get this legislation done um but at the right time so the summer hill uh capital ab brt project um want to talk about um this a little bit more in detail than the other projects because many of the comments that you heard were, were related to this. Um, great news is that uh, in uh, June of, of 2020, just, just this month, we uh, uh, received environmental approval from the FPA. It's a significant milestone, and that lets us move from a, a very conceptual level um, to a, a more detailed, and we have uh, already begun and initiated the 30% design of this project. So we're on target to obligate the federal funds to 12.6 million by September of this year. And um, the conceptual design refinement is underway for the uh, locally preferred alternative corridor. Um, we, we continue to and uh, have ongoing stakeholder coordination. Um, very surprised by some of the comments that I heard because I think they were um, a little misleading about the level of coordination and stakeholder outreach that's happened. This, this, our stakeholder outreach, as I've talked to you before on this project, has begun with, uh, with working with uh, Council Member Smith and continues and is ongoing. We've met with uh, two of the neighborhood end views at their meetings. We've had nine individual stakeholder and advocacy meetings, uh, multiple meetings with, uh, with, um, key stakeholders like Carter, Georgia State, CIM, and, and Newport in the area. Uh, we had a survey where we had 500, more than five, approximately 500 responses. And one of the key uh, things that we learned from that response was that uh, we had an overwhelming desire, 58% to 32% of the, uh, the, the, the people who responded to this stakeholder survey um, that we connect in with the North-South line. They felt that access to uh, the Mercedes-Benz, CIM, Phillips, um, you know, future development in the Gulch was critically important to this project. Um, I've been engaged in this stakeholder outreach myself. Um, I just, uh, just on May 20th, had a presentation that, uh, that CAP asked me to deliver on what was going on with MARTA. And um, 
and the uh, the program is uh, is well underway and uh, and uh, can want to continue that outreach. So let's just make sure we're on the right slide. Uh, uh, Camelton Road corridor is the next slide that, that we should be on. Is that what you're looking at now? Yes, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So Campbellton Road continues. We, uh, we're uh, deploying uh, goals and objectives with a survey. Uh, we're deployed in, in May. Um, we, we're holding a uh, virtual public meeting, as was mentioned, uh, tomorrow on the 25th, um, advancing screening of the transit alternatives through early 2021. Um, developing potential station area strategies, potential TOD scenarios to support those stations through early 2021, and uh, plan on having a uh, locally preferred alternative uh, defined in, in 2021. So we're, we're advancing that project well. Next slide, streetcar east extension. Um, we've begun uh, surveying is underway. Uh, in street segments of the extension between Jackson and, and Irwin uh, at the Beltline Crossing. Um, we're having a very good and productive coordinating meetings with ABI to proceed with obtaining uh, rights of entry um, so that we can advance work on the Beltline. Um, this is this is required to conduct the survey and utility work within the, the, the Beltline right away, but we're also you know, larger issue will we'll lay out um, issues around operation and, and uh, maintaining the system and making sure that we have uh, access to uh, construct and operate a, uh, a system within this corridor. Um, the preferred in-street uh, alignment selected in June of 2020 um, extend and extended couplet with uh, eastbound service on Edgewood and westbound on uh, Auburn Ave. We have a 30% uh, design and project manual for design build is estimated to be completed in, in uh, February of 2022. And uh, we have some public and stakeholder engagement that's scheduled for uh, fiscal year 2021. So that project is advancing well. Next slide is the ART on uh, Memorial, uh, excuse me, Metropolitan and Cleveland Avenues. Um, we're conducting uh, engineering survey work on uh, recommended station areas, uh, confirming station locations for input uh, into uh, some public outreach that will happen this fall. Um, clearly having to coordinate with uh, the local jurisdictions um, as well as GDOT. And we plan on having a completed 30% design on the station areas by December of 2020. Um, this picture here shows some some alternatives that that we're uh, we're considering and we'll bring to uh, the public for their consideration. Um, three options that, that we've laid out um, as potential solutions to uh, implementing ART on Metropolitan in Cleveland. Next slide, please. And that's the uh, Five Points Transformation update. Uh, this project is is advancing well. Uh, we'll have our feasibility study completed by October of 2020. Um, we've uh, completed uh, the uh, canopy uh, deconstruction analysis and uh, completed the, uh, or, or working to complete the uh, reconstruction analysis to uh, connect Broad Street and how that is affected by the uh, topology of the site. Um, procurement of uh, in, uh, Architect and engineering uh, uh, contractors will be uh, done in November of 2020, um, and a procurement of a, uh, a contractor should be done uh, in uh, later this year, early uh, 2021. And one of the, the, the key things, and, and I know this was brought up in some of the public comments, is that part of this project, we are absolutely committed to making sure that we improve bus circulation um, in this area. There's a lot of buses, uh, a lot of MARTA buses that have historically gone into the uh, into uh, this area, but we also have a lot of regional buses that, that come in. And so we're looking to see how, um, how the uh, reconnection of, of Broad Street and being able to uh, move buses off of the uh, roadways around Five Point Station could improve circulation both for pedestrians and buses and uh, other automobiles. Next slide is the uh, 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 Bankhead um, renovation update. The, uh, uh, we've uh, 
selected a preferred concept just very recently this month. Um, we're, we're having a uh, virtual open house to present the preferred concepts and preliminary designs in uh, August of 2020, um, confirming the con concept design by, uh, 20, by September of this year and advance the architectural and engineering to a 30% design by uh, the middle of 2021, 2021 for both the station and the track modifications. You know, I think that this project, as I've reflected on this project, that, you know, it's, it's, it's not only important to the physical um, area at the station and surrounding the station, and, you know, the fact that the uh, West Side Quarry Park is, uh, is going to be a, a huge draw and, and that these improvements will support access to that. Uh, we also see that the eventual uh, BRT service along um, on uh, North Ave uh, connecting into the station and, but it's also, um, uh, you know, improving a new look and, and uh, better circulation throughout the station, better enhancements, but also giving us some, some better options to uh, run service so that we don't have a shorter two-car train going through the core of the east-west through the city, through Five Points in Georgia State, and, uh, serving, serving the areas around um, Mercedes Benz. Uh, we will be able to run longer trains. Uh, here and better service through our operations. So we're excited about that. Uh, next slide is the State of Good Repair Program update. And if you could move right on to the following slide, which is the North Ave operational enhancements. Um, while, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, while these, while this project is part of the, clearly part of the overall more MARTA program, we see this as a great opportunity to implement some enhancements on this corridor um, from, uh, from North Ave Station over to Pont City Market incremental, making some incremental improvements that will eventually uh, blossom into a full BRT. Um, we know uh, that there are already five lanes on, on North Ave. Um, clearly the, the, city, uh, the city streets up to, to uh, Piedmont, um, we're beginning public outreach in, in fall of 2020. We see this as a great opportunity to, uh, you know, advance improvements and not go through the full process of a uh, environmental process for an overall program, but to make some incremental improvements that will, um, over time, support the uh, eventual implementation of BRT on this quarter. So we're excited about that. The next slide, uh, airport station rehabilitation. Um, the enabling work for this uh, work is going to begin uh, this summer in, in uh, August um, with uh, con construction full force beginning in the second half of 2020, um, working with the uh, Department of Aviation to relocate some uh, office space that they have in uh, September of 2020 so that we can install an additional elevator um, we want to make sure uh, that a canopy design uh, uh, is consistent with and augments the, 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 the great work that the city has done to make improvements around the, uh, the canopies and the exterior areas of the, uh, of the airport. And we believe that this uh, construction is estimated to be about two years. Next slide, track renovations, um, uh, TR4 as we call it. Um, we will be replacing uh, 190,000 linear feet of, uh, of rail uh, throughout our system, much of that here in the, in the city. Um, this is not uh, overly interesting or sexy work, but critically important to maintaining our infrastructure. Uh, 50,000 uh, direct fasteners uh, to improve ride, ride quality, replace uh, worn materials, uh, uh, improving uh, and replacing uh, switches and uh, uh, 10,000 concrete ties. The project will last for five and a half years with uh, service interruptions over the weekend. Um, and our next plan event will be replacing uh, 2,800 linear feet of running rail between Medical Center and Dunwoody the weekend of uh, July 10th, 2020. Um, I do want to preview, and, and we'll be providing a lot more information on this. We have some significant work that needs to be done uh, north of Lindbergh, where the the, uh, the lines uh, split between Doraville and, and North 
springs and also some uh, some interlockings on the North Springs line that will cause us to have some uh, longer shutdowns and impacts that will have bus bridges. More to come on that over time. Next slide is our update on our TOD program. Um, if you could go right to the next slide, some facts about um, what, what we've been doing. Um, we have a total of uh, 23 um, TOD sites excited to continue it, to advance this. It sort of shows some some overall facts of, of where where they are. The uh, legend to the right shows uh, you know w where we are in terms of planning and uh, and completion. Um, and I'll talk some details about some of the specific ones as we go to the next slide. Um, TOD in the city of Atlanta um, has been a significant focus and in, uh, in, in an investment by MARTA. Um, the Edgewood Candler Park facility in the fall of uh, 2020, we delivered uh, delivery of the link, a 208 multimodal uh, unit um, with 53 units of affordable housing, 10,000 feet of uh, office retail space, and uh, the Moving in the Spirit facility um, has been completed. We've broken ground in King Memorial uh, with a plan to uh, deliver uh, uh, 300 units with 100 units of affordable housing in early 2020 uh, with 10,000 feet of commercial space as well. And I think this will be a great addition to the neighborhood around King Memorial. We've got some, uh, some desolate parking uh, space there that's now piles of dirt that uh, is excited to, uh, to enhance the community and, and also provide affordable housing. We are in negotiations with some key projects, uh, Peachtree Center, the West Entrance by the Ellis Hotel. Um, we have a term sheet ag agreement uh, for a 40,000 square foot hotel restaurant expansion to the hotel um, and working, working with uh, FDA to get concurrence on uh, negotiating that deal. The Art Center Station, we're working with the development team um, uh, which, will be, which will serve as the basis for the, for the ground lease. Next slide, uh, continuation of, of where we are here in the city of Atlanta. Um, North Ave Station, uh, we're in the procurement process and we'll be seeking board approval in July to a qualified developer for a major development in North Ave Station. Um, as I've spoken about before, the opportunity of the uh, six opportunity zone stations and development around those. MARTA staff continues to work with uh, pre-RFP and pre-development on the six stations uh, really to focus on mixed use, um, which would include affordable housing in these uh, opportunity zones. Five points which we've taken out of that package, we continue to, to uh, collaborate with, uh, with, our, with our team internal to MARTA as our uh, capital group, uh, you know, invests in the station and, and changes the out, out, outside of it. But we see this as a great opportunity for future development at Five Point Station and the modifications that we'll be making with the more MARTA program will enable future development at, at that site. So very proud of our next slide, affordable housing um, is the title. We're uh, very proud of our commitment to, uh, to um, affordable housing. And I think that um, we have been a, uh, a leader in this region advancing affordable housing and, and have a uh, well-established track record, which shows that back in 2010, the board established a guideline uh, with a 20% affordable across our development portfolio. And uh, you know the, the numbers are what matter. So we've uh, we've built or have under construction 175 sites, planned a, a, an additional uh, number of sites that would bring our total here in Atlanta up to over a thousand affordable units. Uh, MARTA's system is also focusing, you know, which includes stations outside the city of Atlanta. And uh, overall, we have either built or planned 1,300 affordable housing units. So we're excited to, uh, to continue to build that portfolio. Next slide, Station Soccer. Um, it's a uh, program that uh, I'm personally excited about and invested in um, and want to make sure that, that this is a way that MARTA as an organization can lean into the communities that we serve, not just through providing transportation but making sure that we're connecting in a meaningful way with the uh, people who live uh, around our stations and work around our stations. 
So we continue to work on advancing this. We have uh, plans to deliver two, uh, two additional sites in uh, 2020 at Lindbergh and HE Homes, and those uh, are going, uh, advancing going well. And then back at West End, which was the uh, second site that, that we opened, um, we have a phase two. And these are some renderings, and we're actually uh, working on to uh, have a uh, recycled and refurbished rail car um, with new seating and landscaping and a, uh, and a, um, a venue right around there. And this will uh, be completed in 2020. It's being fundraised through Station Soccer, paid for by Station Soccer. Um, Marta is donating the uh, rail car, one of the cars that we're retiring as part of our, our rehabilitation program, and we're excited to, uh, to just continue to uh, foster this relationship between Marta and Station Soccer and the communities that we serve. So, so a lot of good stuff going on with that, and uh, I'm certain there'll be some exciting groundbreakings at, at those sites uh, later on this year. Next slide, fresh markets. Uh, we're in our sixth season. Um, obviously, and unfortunately, we were delayed in the opening due to COVID-19. Um, we have established and approved a uh, safety plan. Um, so in the, the markets will begin to open at, at the end of this month, and this is the schedule of the times that we will be uh, providing, and, and we'll have 100 days of uh, providing fresh food to our customers at our MARTA stations. Next uh, slide, the Artbound update. Um, you can go right to the next slide, which is the uh, uh, MARTA Artbound. Um, the, uh, the next slide will show a, uh, a uh, large-scale artwork that is being installed at the Grant Street Tunnel, a uh, reflective uh, 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 mural. Um, we have a call for muralists at our Brady facility. Um, we continue ongoing to... Uh, uh, connect with people with with station musicians um, and uh, showcase them although that has been affected by COVID-19 and we have a recent airport uh, uh, artwork call uh, Martyrs Artbound has named 10 finalists to propose designs for a large-scale mosaic that will be installed um, with planned renovations to airport stations so we're excited to uh, to uh, connect both our capital improvements not just the physical structure, but making sure that the, uh, the, the the community of artists can connect with that. And on the next slide, we have a concept rendering of the uh, of the uh, tunnel that I spoke about earlier. Um, Marta's Arts Organization dashboard curated local artist Adam Bostic and uh, local historian Scott Morris to create this tunnel of highway reflectors creating a shimmering display that changes colors subtly as people um, on foot or in car or bikes pass through the tunnel. So this is uh, looks great and I look forward to, to getting out there and seeing that once it's done. Next slide, we have some, uh, some key initiatives that we've been working on, MARTA Rider initiatives. And if you go to the next slide, MARTA is supporting COVID uh, testing. So we were uh, glad to be able to support testing uh, in, in the neighborhood and lean in to better connect with the neighborhoods that we serve. Um, we tested uh, about 400 people on the 19th of May and uh, 300 on the 16th of May and continue to look to, uh, for opportunities to uh, make sure that we're supporting the community. So next slide. Um, we have established a... Uh, Rider Advisory Council, and along with that, uh, Rhonda Allen, um, a, a Georgia Tech grad, by the way, is uh, our, was appointed our first uh, Chief Customer Experience Officer, and will be she will be leading this group. We received 80 applications, and we recently named a 24-person Rider Advisory Council. We held our first meeting by Zoom um, in early June. It was really an icebreaker, get people to connect with each other, get them to meet some uh, MARTA staff. And we have our next uh, meeting, which is scheduled for uh, July 1st, and we will give some presentations on MARTA history and governance. And, and we're really looking to, to lean on this group to give us a great perspective on customer experience and, and, and things that we can focus on to improve the overall um, experience that, that our customers have when using our system. Next slide, the FY 2021 proposed budget. I'm proud to say that we have a uh, continue to have a balanced budget. We've uh, proposed no layoffs. 
um, and I'm going to provide some details of the budget. Um, next slide, the FY2020 operating results and the projections. Um, as you can see, the blue line was our revenues for the first three quarters was in excess of our expenses. And then um, the COVID-19 hit and uh, hit us hard like many others. And we have a uh, significant shortfall in our fourth quarter. We do have uh, money from the CARES Act, which was dedicated to uh, public transportation. And MARTA will get about um, just shy of $300 million to help close some of these gaps. Um, our 2021 budget, next slide, uh, the highlights of the budget, um, we have just over a $1.1 billion total budget between, excuse me, between operating and capital, the ninth year of a, uh, of a balanced budget, deferring fare increases, again, uh, sustaining current service levels um, so that when uh, COVID-19 um, subsides and we have to, and we're able to, uh, uh, lift the restrictions that we've had to put in place because of social distancing. We do have the funds to operate service levels that we've historically had. Uh, continue our major capital ex expenditures around our state of good repair. And uh, clearly, as I had mentioned, we're deploying the Federal CARES Act relief to uh, preserve um, and make sure that, that we have money for future years as we come out of this, uh, this recession. Next slide, the FY 2021 operating budget proposed. Um, as you can see um, in the uh, square box, um, the proposed uh, now approved uh, 2021 budget um, does have $150 million of CARES Act money. Um, we, we put aside a $20 million contingency uh, around COVID-19 so that uh, as we identify things that we either need to do or are required to do, we uh, built that into our budget already, and we continue to have a, uh, a surplus. Although um, with the downturn in the economy and the projections that we have for revenue, um, we do have some challenges ahead, but believe that um, through efficiencies and uh, in good fiscal stewardship, we can uh, continue to have years of uh, balanced budgets going forward. Next slide is the uh, FY 2021 capital budget proposed. Um, as you can see, we continue to invest. This is the uh, state of good repair program, uh, the existing one cent sales tax. I'll speak to the, uh, to the um, other uh, capital uh, program. Uh, as you can see, we have a, continue to have a consistent investment in our infrastructure. And uh, the next slide is our uh, summary of our investments in, uh, for 20 and 21 on our uh, More MARTA program. And as you can see, the projects that we continue to invest in to advance the More MARTA program. And uh, with that, the final slide is a thank you. And uh, thank you for your, uh, your attention. And uh, I'll turn it back to uh, Chairman. Okay. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you for this presentation, Mr. Parker. I, um, I have a few questions, but I will um, arrange time with you and your staff for later. Sure. Um, sure. Council members, uh, hit your speaker button if you have any comments or questions that you'd like to have answered right now uh, with Mr. Parker. Um, Ms. Overstreet. Thank you. Um, thank you for your presentation, Mr. Parker. You're very welcome. Um, I call that everything in the kitchen sink. Yeah. <laughs> You've covered it all. And um, I appreciate that. Um, so I um, wanted to assure the public that Campbellton Road has had a significant amount of public engagement and we're just beginning where that whole Absolutely. corridor is concerned. Yes, and I, so I want to thank you for that. I mean, not only that, but we're we're also having one tomorrow, um, mm -hmm. uh, the virtual uh, meeting, and we've been very consistent about it because I want it to be community driven. And you guys heard me loud and clear, and everyone has really been leaning in to make sure mm -hmm. that that is actually happening um, to the point where I'm actually sending things out in uh, newsletters. Uh, 
so that we'll, you know, we can get as much participation as possible. So I appreciate that. Um, uh, can you talk about the engagement? Because I know that that Summer Hill project that everyone is talking about, I'm pretty sure that, that Council Member Smith has spoken with me before about the engagement process there, uh, but I don't have any of those details. So I just wanted yeah. to, you know, hear your thoughts over it, on it since that was part of our public comment. Yeah, you know, um, heard a, heard a, a, a consistent message there, but I want to assure you that, um, and, and the rest of the council members that, that, as I've said all along, we're committed to continuing strong uh, public public commitment and, and uh, you know, we're working very, very closely with Council Member Smith um, and made sure that um, we began the public engagement with her and continue that. Um, you know, you know, some of one of the, the challenges that, that we just naturally have with infrastructure projects is that um, we, we're following a process. And so one of the comments that you heard was that um, you know, we haven't made a, you know, we've presented things that, that, that weren't showing the alignment. Um, and that's true. And, but, but the reason it's true is because we were in the middle of an environmental process and we were trying to get feedback from stakeholders about their preference about whether it connects with five points or, or um, Georgia State. So we thought it was completely inappropriate to uh, show a map of exactly where it would go because that's sort of telling your constituents what we believe the answer is before we even ask them the question. So, so um, you know, we we're now out of the environmental process and have environmental clearance, and now we're in the design stage, and this is where we will begin to show. And coming this this um, August September, will be we will be going through a public process showing the 30% design, which will show um, the alignment um, more fully. Um, you know, we've had a significant number of uh, stakeholder meetings and uh, mm -hmm. you know, I won't go over all of them, but it's, it's been significant and, and we're committed to continuing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that, that's why I'm asking because I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that the information that I've been getting from our side is, is something that, you know, everyone would know about. So I'm not sure. Uh, what other processes you guys can sure. do to make sure people know all of the work that you all are putting in uh, in the community to make sure these projects, you know, have a full uh, right. participation of, of all of the communities because I know what I'm experiencing is, is you know, quite indulgent and I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so um, can you give me just a little bit of information about where we are with the COVID, uh, how is ridership, uh, where, you know, what yeah. are people having to pay to ride, uh, what the schedule looks like? Yeah, so um, so just to, you know, we, we've had a significant decline in, in ridership um, uh, as, as COVID-19 uh, rolled out in, in, in March, excuse me, in, in, yeah, in March and in, in April and in May. Um, one of the, you know, we, we have on our rail service, we're down by some, somewhere around 65, 70%. Um, we're starting to see a, a, a trend in ridership growing back. Um, it's very slow, um, it's, but, but it, is, it is definitely a trend. We've, uh, we've, we've added service back some service levels back onto, for example, a, uh, a seven and a half minute headway on, uh, on the uh, trunk of the north-south line and, uh, and uh, include better service. We were at more weekend service, which is more like uh, 20 minute service on, on the branches. On the bus side, um, you know, we really experienced something that was very, very different than, than the industry. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that was that we didn't have a significant decline in ridership like other systems have. Uh, it mm -hmm. was significant, but, but not dramatic. Uh, so we've had about a 40% a uh, decline in bus ridership. And so what we've had to deal with is making sure that our buses um, are not the, uh, overcrowded 
uh, and don't become a contributing factor in not allowing people to socially distance and the spread of, uh, of COVID-19. We, we take that very, very serious. So we have doubled down our service in what we've called our essential routes, which started with 41 routes. Um, and, uh, and, and where a bus used to be able to carry about 35, 40 people, carrying about 15 to 20 people to be able to provide the service capacity for the service demand. We're putting twice as many buses on those routes and therefore we're putting those resources where they can be best used. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we are every week evaluating where we have excess capacity and trying to uh, remove some buses in a safe and thoughtful manner and adding service back. And we continue to do that offhand. I think we've added maybe four or five bus routes. We'll continue to do that. Um, but, but I think at the, at the end of the day, um, we've got to work hard to um, encourage and we're working on some public service campaigns and, and considering some other activities um, to get people to wear masks because um, mm -hmm. you know transit is, is mass transit and mass transit is not completely compatible with with social distancing it's the same issue that the airlines have um, they're you know they're uh, they're able to require people as they walk down the jetway that they have a mask in hand. It's, it's a much more distributed system that we have here at MARTA. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have a, the legal authority to enforce masks um, in this state, um, but, but we, you know, we're looking at things. We really want to turn this into a public service campaign. Um, similar like what happened with seatbelts years ago, you know, we, we mm -hmm. all didn't really think about where, you know, I know Probably you and I rode in the back of our parents' station wagons at some point in our <laughs> yes, life. Yes, exactly. We didn't really care about um, seatbelts, and, and now we wouldn't even think about getting in a car without a seatbelt on. And it, it's become a, a right. social awareness, and so we've got to do that with masks, and we're working on some things. Because quite frankly, this is the, the right solution is not to just um, force people and engage in conflict around wearing masks. We've got to get people's minds to turn on the importance of that. So. So that's Agreed. our focus there, and, and that will get us back to more like normal service, which is critically important to this city and this region. Okay. What about the fair? Is the fair the same? Or what's yeah. The so, so, so uh, yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've always been collecting our fares at the rail stations um, where we're boarding the buses in the rear of the buses. We are, uh, we have no way to collect the fares, but we are experimenting with and, and probably going with a shield, kind of a vinyl shield that will protect and separate mm -hmm. the customers from the bus operators. And that will allow us to uh, open the front doors and get us back to normal fare collection, which is, which is important okay. to, our, to our bottom line. Yeah, so because congratulations on having nine years of um, a balanced budget. Um, that's mm -hmm. a, a big deal, um, especially from where we came from. So mm -hmm. thank you, you know, kudos to your leadership and your, your whole team for that. Um, also, from the from what you just said to me, as far as where your your trends are uh, with ridership, mm -hmm. um, it's really letting me know uh, because we just heard from the airport. A presentation uh, recently. Oh no, I did. I had a, a briefing uh, mm -hmm. this week. But what is what that tells me is that the people that are riding Marta really need to be on Marta. They have to. They they are uh, tied to the fact that they do not have a car for whatever reason, or it's important to them to take mass transit. And those are the people that probably. Our, our our constituents that uh, have been on the forefront of this coronavirus. Um, they don't have the option of staying at home or refusing to, uh, or no, or, or not having to get on a flight and could telework. They are hands on and those are our uh, people that really need us to make sure we stay um, cognizant of the fact that they have to get to work. And yeah. so I'm glad that I asked you that so that I'll know um, that your trends are quite different from the airport and it's reflective of 
of what I've always thought, that we need to take care of the people that need us the most. Um, so, um, good. All right. Well, thank you very much again for your presentation. And, um, you know, looking forward to seeing you soon one day in person. Yeah. Looking right. forward to it as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Overstreet. Are there any other um, comments from any council members? Okay. All right. Seeing none, uh, like I said, I will schedule some time with you and your staff to um, for, for next week, hopefully. Uh, I want to just kind of go over a few things related to, um, you know, the choosing of routes during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, the process of doing that. And um, a little bit about MARTA policing uh, as we are just overall discussing uh, various forms of reform uh, as a whole. Um, and then uh, things related to um, just, uh, you know, all the BRT, the things that the uh, Central Atlanta Progress has some thoughts related to BRT and Summer Hill. Um, of course, Camelton Road, making sure we get that right. So, um, <clears throat> so we'll be. T and I just wanted to give you a little heads up. Those some of the things that we'll, yeah. I wanted to talk to. We, we, so, we've uh, got we've got some good information to share with you, and just uh, you know, I won't get get into any details. But around the policing, you know, one of the things that, that we're really focusing on is uh, around policing is is how we can do that a little differently. And one of the things that, that we'll share with you is an effort with Hope Atlanta to bring some social workers into the system and, and, and be in a better position to deal with our homeless population that rides our system and, and make sure mm -hmm. that, that we're dealing with them in that way and, and how we're investing our funds to make sure that, that we're doing that. So look forward to that good. conversation. No, that, that's very good. That's in line with the, the thoughts that I would have and, and want good. to hear more about how to have trained social workers deal with that type of, you know, challenge versus, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the encounters that we have with yeah. police. Um, okay, so we'll talk more. Thank you, and uh, okay. we'll uh, be in touch. Uh, thank, thank you for all your support, everyone. Thank you. All right, guys. Now let's go back to our walk-in paper. Um, do we have... Uh, Mrs. Brown on the phone still from the law department. Let's see if the law department is on mute um, and make sure they are off mute. Uh, we gave them yes, some Ms. time. Here. I, am, I am here. Civic okay. Plan. Great, great. You sent us a copy of the updated walk-in paper. Uh, council members, I hope that you all see it and have had a chance to review it. Um, Ms. Uh, Brown, Mr. Chair, just, yes, Mr. Mr. Chair, before Ms. Brown provides an overview, could I read in the updated caption just for the record, please? Yes, you should. I appreciate it. Thank you. A resolution by Transportation Committee authorizing the mayor, her designee, to amend the concessions agreements, excluding car rental companies, to extend rental payment relief effective July 1, 2020, for a period of 12 months ending on June 30th, 2021, to address future rent reduction due to decreased employment and to suspend parking fees for up to 400 concessions permit holders from July 1, 2020, for a period of 12 months ending on June 30th, 2021, and to waive marketing fees and storage fees at Hartsville Jackson Atlanta International Airport from July 1, 2020, for a period of 12 months ending on June 30th, 2021, in response to the continued effects of the COVID-19 pandemic crisis and further purposes. Okay, thank you, thank you. Now, Ms. Brown, can you just uh, walk us through your updates and, um, and the rationale of Ms. Overstreet as regarding our uh, rental cars? Yeah, so um, you will notice that the fourth whereas clause, we've got Council Member Westmoreland's language regarding mm -hmm. the um, public health measures and the employees, concessions employees allow the airport yeah. businesses to stay open. Um, you will also notice as you move along there that um, there is the relief that sought, which is the waiver of the MAG or the suspension of the MAG 
um, from July 1, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Um, there is the um, percentage rent reduction um, based on employment during this continued relief period that's included. Um, and as um, Mr. Selvin has referenced, there is the um, suspension of the parking there, as well as the suspension of the marketing fees and the storage fees, all occurring from July 1, 2020. Um, through June 30th, 2021. Okay. And the uh, uh, rental car, uh, you're going to issue another paper about rental cars. What's the difference between rental cars and concessions? The rental car companies, uh, two of them, that we, or more than that, four of them, I believe, are in bankruptcy right now. And so, we'll need to actually get authorization for a restructuring of the required payments for a later date. We have to do it by way of an agreement. Okay. I understand. Does this mean that, if I'm not mistaken, they still, the ones that are operational that are not in bankrupt, if we don't act today, they still don't have to send us a rent check for on July one, right? They have we have an, we can take up this item at our next meeting, and they still will be okay. I think we have an. It's my understanding. No, you're absolutely correct. There is um, the agreement. I think authorizes an extension for thirty days. Correct. Um, for the month of July, but we do need to get the bankruptcy court authorization, which is why we need to do it as part of a separate paper. Okay. Got it. I appreciate that uh, explanation. Let me look and see if there's questions from council members. Are there any speakers wanting to speak to this, council members? Does this capture all that we, I think it captures all that I've heard we wanted to make sure was included and uh, the little car park being excluded for that, uh, for that rationale, which makes a lot of sense. Okay, I don't see any comments or questions. I will make a recommendation to approve. Is there a second? Second over street. Okay. Um, Let's now prepare a vote. One moment, please. Just for clarification purposes, the caption on the screen is not the updated caption. Um, we'll make sure that the minutes and future agendas reflect the updated caption. No, we, we, uh, thank, you, thank you, Ms. Pulandini, for that explanation. I know that you guys have had to juggle a lot on this paper at the end, so we appreciate that explanation. Mr. Massacre, I think you're the last to need to vote. There it is. Vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. This item is capable. Okay. Thank you all for that. Um, we heard our presentations. We've got a legislative item. Uh, if council members don't have anything else to add, it is now time to go back to all of the remaining public comment items. Um, okay, so Ms. Poole, oh, we have one, one council member ready to speak. Ms. Overshoot. Yeah, I do have a quick question. Um, so is it, is there a reason why the other transportation paper didn't come through transportation that's only going to FEC only because of the procurement process or is it not considered transportation also? Is it not dual referred? So, put, uh, 
Ms. Pondini, if you can respond to this, or I mean, I can kind of get it started. From my understanding, it came to transportation, and we could uh, vote to refer it. I mean, it would go to finance event because of the uh, procurement waiver, but we could still hear it and discuss it mm -hmm. in transportation. But our vote would be to re we would we could send it over there with no recommendation or just simply refer it. Uh, but we could have a full dialogue and discussion about it in this committee, but it would still have to go to finance exec. Is that correct, Ms. Clooney? Well, well, Mr. Chair, the, the other paper, um, because it's waiving the competitive procurement source selection provisions of the code, um, anything pertaining to that is actually under the purview of finance executive committee. So it was not before transportation at all. Um, it was incorrectly forwarded by, by accident, but this item, um, is under the purview of finance executive and not transportation because of the particular waivers. Okay, got it. Just wanted to make sure I asked that. Yeah. Right. But, hey, as the vice chairman, woman of this airport, of, of this committee that oversees the airport, you can talk about it if you want to. <laughs> we just won't, you know, it, it will have to go to finance exec, uh, but anything related to the airport we can discuss. It's just because of the procurement part, you know, we have to. Um, and I'm, I'm, I respect that, so that's fine. I did share my thoughts on it and how it related to uh, the information and the research that I received from, you know, Delta Airlines and, and other stakeholders. Just wanted to make sure that everyone understands that there's no bounce back happening, um, any, you know, in a quick way at all. Like even. The uh, CARES Fund has, you know, they've had to actually spread that out over a number of years because they know that going from zero passengers to even 50% could take up to two years just to get there and um, two and a half years for 70% and, and on and on according to the projections. So, you know, I'm just going to... Um, you know, respect this process, of course, but, you know, we still want to make sure that we are setting the state up for success as well as the employees and, um, you know, a lot of our concessionaires and, and rental cars and, and parking uh, employ lots of Atlantans. And uh, we want to make sure that we're setting all of those entities that own every uh, company out at the airport, setting them up for, um, you know, success. COVID was not planned. Um, everyone, I think that people should not do well if they have a horrible business model and it has not been working. But if they are in good business and doing, uh, and, and we're in, you know, in, in, in great numbers in February, this is extremely unfortunate for for them, and I just wanted to make sure that we're, you know, setting an expectation that we can, you know, stand by in a in, in a real measured way um, in each community in Atlanta as well as through Georgia. So, just wanted to just reiterate that. Right. Thank you. Yes. No, that is good. So, um, so yes, let's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens at FEC. I think they're going to just wait. And, and allow it to, you know, be massaged a little bit more. Um, so now, Ms. Pumadini, let's hear our wonderful public comments. How many do we have left? I believe um, we had a total of 85 at the beginning, and we played nine, so we have 76 remaining, um, which totals about 54 minutes. All right. Let's go. Hi, my name is Ariel Duncan. I live in East Atlanta Village. Um, I'm calling to request that you all um, do the job that we have elected you to do, um, which is to honor the people of this city, um, to help us move about and through it safely. Um, and none of that's possible right now because of the way that we have decided to spend a third of our budget on the police. Um, so I'm asking you today to amend the budget 
defined resolution 20-R-4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Um, I am deeply concerned that this did not pass the first time. Um, I am grateful um, to my city council member, member for, for voting for it, but the rest of you all, I don't know what you're thinking. Um, I don't know what city you're looking at or what constituents you're talking to, um, but whoever is saying that we need to spend this much money on the police is on the wrong side of history. And that's really the question is whether Atlanta is going to be on the right side of history or the wrong side of history. Um, we've got work to do, and I hope that you all can do it. And thank you for listening to this. Thank you for your service to the city. Um, I know you have to consider everything carefully, but just know this is how your constituents feel. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lauren Coleman. I'm an Atlanta resident in the Druid Hills neighborhood. Um, I'm calling for the Transportation Committee. I'm urging the Atlanta City Council to please amend the budget and fund resolution 20-R-4068 and reallocate the $73 million of police funds proposition in that resolution in order to reimagine public safety. Speaking towards transportation in particular, I'm a graduate student at Georgia State University and I rely on public transportation when we're not in the middle of a pandemic daily. It would be wonderful to see some of this $73 million reallocated into transportation so that MARTA could be improved and greater access to public transportation could be had by all of us Atlanta citizens. I truly urge you to reconsider um, the decisions that were made recently in regards to this initiative and to reallocate these police funds so that we can begin down a path to a more vibrant, uh, safer, uh, more better resource Atlanta that I know that we all would love to see in the future. Thank you. Hi, this is Molly McCudman. I'm a resident of District 5, and I'm calling to demand that Atlanta City Council amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Black Lives Matter. Thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Jennifer Duke from Houghton County, and I'm calling the Transportation Committee within the City Council. Atlanta City Council, and I am calling on behalf to amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and to relocate the 73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety, um, especially for our seems to be targeted the people of color, um, and to request that um, more nonviolent calls that are coming in, like what happened with Rayshard Brooks, be handled in a more delicate manner um, with more creative ways and maybe put that money into something like that or mental health even. Um, but yeah, it should not be handled with police. But thank you so much for considering my request today. I'm very thankful to you all and thank you so much. Hello, my name is Rebecca Mountain. I live in 30315. I'm calling the Transportation Committee within the Atlanta City Council, and I want to first uh, remind you that transportation is a um, incredibly important force in social good. Uh, so too are the demands that I have, which are that you move to amend the budget and fund resolution 20 R. 4068 to reallocate $73 million of police funds to reimagine public safety. Transportation is absolutely imperative to public safety, and you have the ability to change our city and to change the world, and I trust that you will do that. My name is Danielle Purvis, and I live in Atlanta, Georgia, 30309. I'm urging the Atlanta City Council and the Transportation Committee to amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and to reallocate 
$73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Our city is a vibrant and diverse city, uh, and every resident in the city deserves to feel safe, to have services that adequately protect them and maintain their health and well-being. And I would love to see the Atlanta City Council make the right decision. Thank you. My name is Alex Franco, and I am a resident of Atlanta, Georgia, and I am calling to demand that the council amend the budget and fund resolution 20-R-4068, and that they reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety, that money should be put towards education, healthcare, and other community initiatives, and we should defund and abolish the force that is routinely killing citizens of our city and terrorizing protesters. You must act and do the right thing for Atlanta. Hello, I'm Sierra Castano, a resident of West End, and I urge the city council to pass resolution 20-R4068, reallocating $37 million of police funds to reimagine public safety. I think now more than ever, it's important that we listen to the cries of the community and create an environment that really is safe for everyone. Thank you. Hello, my name is Amelia Conrad. I live in Atlanta's District 2. I'm calling today to ask that you amend the city budget and fund resolution 20R4068 to reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you and have a good day. Good morning, my name is Courtney Smith. I am calling to demand, not request, the amended budget and fund resolution 20-R-4068 plus to reallocate 73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. We have seen time and time again, especially in Atlanta alone, that the people that are supposed to protect and serve the community are not doing that. They are very, police officers are very selective in who they choose to pull over and who they choose to arrest and who they choose to charge and who they choose to put in jail. And we see that black people are targeted at a highly alarming rate than any other race. And I think that it's time that we put an end to it. This is our time to really make change and really make a difference. So, what you can do with that extra $73 million, give it to underfunded communities, schools that don't have new books or computers that and people can use and learn from. We need community centers where people can grow and create community and create those relationships. We need homeless shelters. There are thousands of people in the Atlanta city area alone that are homeless and need a place to live, especially when it's super hot outside, when it's raining, when it's super cold. They shouldn't have to be under bridges and sleeping on sidewalks and in front of buildings when we have the funds, obviously, to build a place where they can go, a place where they can lay their head at night. Everybody doesn't have everything together all the time, but we have to help our people. And obviously the funds that have been allocated to the police beforehand have not been used properly. Even in such instances, they don't want to release body cam footage. They don't want to release the audio voices of what actually happened. They lie and cover up things in order to save their own. And people are dying. People are getting murdered in cold blood and we, as the city of Atlanta, who is predominantly black, we have been here. We, this country was built on the backs of black people. And we should be the example to say that we are not going to allow this to happen anymore. We are going to make change, and we hope that other states follow soon. Take the first step. Be a leader, Atlanta. I'm asking, I'm begging, please, defund the police. Good morning. My name is Sarah Taylor, and I am a resident of Decatur. I am calling to ask you to amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Black Lives Matter. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Susie McGee. I'm um, president of City of Atlanta, and I'm calling because I'd like to ask you all to amend the budget and to fund resolution 20-R-4068 and reallocate $73 million that's currently being proposed for police funding so that we can actually improve public safety in Atlanta. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sophia DeLuca. I live in Atlanta. I'm calling um, about the Atlanta Council budget, and I would like to ask the council to amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Um, I would like to remind the police, or I'd like to remind the council that um, right now defunding the police is the best way to prioritize black lives and protect them. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Hannah S. Leeson. Uh, I'm an Atlanta resident, specifically in DeKalb County. Uh, I'm calling um, with regard to the budget and the upcoming council meeting regarding the budget and to demand that all committees amend the budget and fund resolution, resolution 20R4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds back into our communities. Um, I think this is a way to reimagine public safety. If we are able to defund the police, take those funds and funnel it back into Atlanta. Um, I think we spend too much time giving power and allocating our resources to the police who have been abusing it and taking innocent lives. The only way to make Atlanta better is to invest in, in Atlanta. And I think that's done right now through defunding the police and allocating that money back into our communities. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Hagedorn and I'm a resident of the Virginia Highlands neighborhood in Atlanta. And I'm calling, urging you to amend the budget and to fund resolution 20R4068, as well as to reallocate 73 million of the police funds in order to reimagine public safety. This is such an important moment and I'm hoping that you will seize it in order to show our community that black lives really do matter. Thank you. Hello, my name is Claire Zates. I am a resident of Fulton County in Atlanta. Uh, I'm calling it to leave a comment for the Transportation Committee, which I understand is meeting on Wednesday, June 24th. Um, my comment is, and my demand, I should say, is that you please amend the city's budget and fund resolution 20R4068. In accordance to that, um, or in addition, if the council would please vote to reallocate the $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety, whether that be in the fund um, mentioned in 20R4068 or in support of other public services in Atlanta. Thank you very much for your consideration. I find this to be of utmost importance for our community and hope that you will be in agreement. Hello. Aaron Wilson here. Uh, so I believe that we should amend the budget on the resolution 20R4068 and reallocate the 73 million of the police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Because, you know, I mean, the police don't really, I mean, is society getting better with them? No, it's kind of getting worse. They're kind of abused with the power. And I think it's kind of horrible. Also, if you know someone that we can talk to about this state bill, let's fix that as well. Anywho, please, please. Hi, my name is Helena Herring, and I'm calling because I hope y'all defund the police department. Um, I was so glad to see the city council take up and pass the resolution on Saturday, the June 20th, to move half of the money out of the police department and keep it in hold until we can figure out a better way to spend it. Um, and then really disappointed to wake up and find that, in fact, you did not actually um, put your money where your mouth is and the budget has stayed the same. So I know this is the Transportation Committee, um, but my question to you is how are you continuing to do the business of our city while not addressing a major crisis that is rocking our nation. Atlanta can be a leader. Um, and so I encourage you in this moment to go back and fix the budget and defund the police department. They are killing innocent people. They have been the choice to tear gas and fire rubber bullets at protesters and tase people. It is unconscionable, it is immoral, and our tax dollars shouldn't pay for it. We shouldn't be occupied by a outside army. Um, we should defund the police department, and I hope y'all will do that. Hi, 
My name is Maria Santnagova. I live in the city of Atlanta, specifically District 3, which is represented by Antonio Brown. On June 19th, the city council voted and passed resolution 20-R-4086. This resolution requires the mayor and the police department to produce a report containing thoughtful, significant, and comprehensive changes to our public safety system by December 1st, 2020. A earlier version of this resolution made $73 million of the APD budget contingent on providing this report. Unfortunately, in a second vote, the council failed to set aside these funds and resolution 20-R-4086 now lacks the necessary resources to be effective. Therefore, I'm going to ask this committee to amend the budget and fund resolution 20-R-4086 reallocating $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jordan Langover. I'm a resident of Old Fourth Ward. Um, I'm calling to ask that the police be defunded and that the resolution 20-R-4068 is funded instead and about $73 million of police funds should be um, reallocated to reimagine public safety. Thank you, have a great day. Hi, my name is Lila Miller um, and I am calling today as a concerned citizen to demand that the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 be amended, um, and as well that 73 million of police funds um, be reallocated in order to reimagine public safety throughout Atlanta. Thank you. Hi, my name is Liz Nicholson. I'm an Atlanta resident living in Grant Park. Um, I am calling um, to ask that on the behalf of the Movement for Black Lives and the protest uh, that you amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Our police are not helping public safety in the way that our communities need. We need to amplify other services um, and resources, including education, public health, um, rather than continuing to fund our bloated police budget. Thank you so much. Bye. Hello, my name is Shannon Duffy. I'm a resident of Fulton County 5th District, and I'm calling to address Atlanta City Council's Transportation Committee. Um, I am demanding that the council amends the budget and funds resolution 20R4068 and reallocate 73 million of police funds um, in order to reimagine public safety. Um, the people are out in the streets, we're here to be heard and um, ignoring what people are demanding and requesting isn't gonna stop these demonstrations. Um, if you really would like the city to move forward, what we need to do is dismantle the institutions that are brutalizing black people and um, wreaking havoc and
we reallocate $73 million of police funds uh, to um, alternative uh, means of public safety and uh, that we um, fund resolution 20R4068. Thank you. Hello, my name is Trevor May. I'm a resident of the Virginia Islands neighborhood. Um, I am calling um, to ask this council to amend the budget and, and fund resolution 20R4068. We have got to reallocate the $73 million allotted by this resolution um, that's dedicated to police funds currently and reallocate them back to other community services. We have got to start reimagining public safety in this city and build a better culture between the residents and the police department that is supposed to protect us. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Emily Bunker. I live in Midtown Atlanta and I'm calling about the budget and fund resolution 20R4068. Uh, I strongly believe that we need to reallocate at least 73 million of our police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Um, this is crucial. This is something that the city needs and the city wants. Uh, I know that there's been a lot of talk about it, but I seriously believe this is something that will be positive for Atlanta, and I hope that you will take to heart all of the calls that you've been receiving the last few days. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day. Hi, my name is Keenan Jones, calling on behalf of the citizens of, of the city of Atlanta. We are demanding that you amend this budget and fund resolution 20-R-4068 and reallocate the $73 million um, in police funds. Uh, we are looking to reimagine public, public safety, and the scope of police is way too far far spread, and these police are undertrained, are undertrained and not able to and are not able to uh, attend to the needs of this community. We are looking to defund them and eventually to abolish them. To abolish them and reinvest those funds back into the community. We are demanding that as you, as duly elected um, officials for the city of Atlanta, to be on the right side of history and really look into reimagining what public safety looks like for the citizens of Atlanta and really what looks like a community of care. Um, I'm asking again to defund, we're asking to defund police as well as realloc we're reallocating those police funds to into community service. Goodbye. Hi, my name is Taylor Kinsler and I'm from Ormwood Park. Um, I'm calling to demand that the Atlanta City Council amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 to reallocate $73 million of police funds, um, dollars of police funds, in order to reimagine public safety. I don't think we should keep putting money into institutions that are literally killing and um, marginalizing black lives. I think that money needs to be used for education, specifically in other parts of the community in order to make our communities better, safer, and not oppressive. Um, so please y'all do the right thing, please. Hello, my name is Roberta Moore and I live in Council District 2. I'm calling to ask the council and the mayor to amend the budget by funding resolution 20R4068 and reallocating $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety through means more sophisticated, productive, and humane than harassment and brutality. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carissa Tavasoli and I am calling about resolution 20R4068. I'm asking to reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Um, thank you, Transportation Committee. I look forward to hearing you do the right thing. Hi, my name is Catherine Smith, and I live in zip code 30317. And I was calling because I think that the Atlanta City Council should amend the budget and fund resolution 20-R-4068. Um, and I think they should reallocate $73 million of the police budget um, in order to reimagine public safety. Thanks for your time. Bye. Hello, my name is Tess Malone, and I am a resident of Virginia Highlands, Atlanta, Georgia, zip code 30306. And I am calling to 
ask you to amend the budget with the city council proposal of 20R4068 to reallocate $73 million of police funding to reimagine public safety. The funding police should be your priority. There are much better ways that we could be spending this money that would allow us to rely even less on police. So I'm asking you to defund the police and work on this budget amendment uh, and reallocate that $73 million. Thank you so much for your time. Hello, my name is Lee Dowell. I'm calling to ask that you amend the budget to fund the 20-R-4068 resolution approved by the council. Again, my name is Lee Dowell. I'm calling to ask that you amend the budget to fund the 20-R-4068 resolution approved by the council. Thank you. Sophie Talk. Hi, my name is Sophie. I'm a lifelong Atlantan living in Onward Park. I'm calling to demand that City Council amend its budget reallocating at least half of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Funding resolutions like 20R4068 would be a step in the right direction. I believe in Atlanta without an oppressive police presence and believe that reallocating police funds is the only way to get there. Thank you. Hello, my name is Holly Michonne. You're calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I was calling to ask the Transportation Committee um, to ask the Atlanta City Council um, to approve um, Resolution 20-R-4068, reallocating $73 million um, from the APD budget to other departments in the city that clearly need them. I don't understand why we have a $262 million budget for the police in the first, police in the first place. Um, because more police does not equal less crime, better cities, better roads, less food deserts. It just doesn't equal that. So if we could just reallocate those funds, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Bye. Hello, my name is Kira Hines, and I'm calling to uh, urge you as the Transportation Committee to fund um, and pass the resolution 20R4068 to begin to just defund um, and dismantle the Atlanta Police Department. Um, I think that the public is speaking. I think that, and I think that it's your, it is your duty um, to serve them, to listen, and to acknowledge the fact that although the oppression systems are more uh, monetarily uh, valuable for y'all, um, you're actually serving us. And we want this resolution to pass because we want cops to stop murdering our neighbors and our friends and our families. Um, so that starts with y'all. So please pass this resolution um, and think about why, how that could be helpful. You know, imagine if everybody wasn't pulled over by cops and MARTA was like an effective system and like, you know, we could get around safely and efficiently and environmentally um, consciously. So. Um, imagine all the money that you guys could get to do what you need to do to make transportation in Atlanta better. So um, do the right thing and, and listen to your constituents. Thank you. Hi, my name is Julia Oliver and I'm a resident of Kirkwood. I urge you to please listen to your city. Please listen to the hours of voicemail of people telling you to begin the necessary steps towards divesting critical funding from the police department. I ask you instead to reallocate funds to our schools, our affordable housing, transportation, healthcare, and other community resources. This is what your community members are asking for and it's what they deserve. Atlanta is looking to you to keep our city on the right side of history. And if you don't listen to the people now, you will listen to them next year when they vote you out. Please don't let us down. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Holly Finn, resident of Atlanta, Georgia, 30306. I'm calling to request to, uh, that you amend the budget and fund resolution 20-R-4068 and reallocate 73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you. Hi, my name is Allison Carter and I live in the North Longwood Park area. I am calling the Transportation Committee to ask that you all amend the budget and fund Resolution 20R4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. I believe police are no longer serving the common good, and I think that they've demonstrated that through recent events, most especially the murder of Rayshard Brooks. 
And through that, I feel like they've demonstrated that they're not here to serve and protect. Therefore, they need to be reimagined in some form of public safety rather than what they are now. So I ask that you all, again, amend the budget, fund resolution 20R368, and reallocate 70 million of police funds to reimagine public safety. Thank you for your time. Please do the right thing. Hello, my name is Erin Clark, and thank you for having it be an honor to serve me. And by doing that, I request that you amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and reallocate 73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jamie Randall. I live in Midtown Atlanta. I'm calling with a public comment to again please urge council members to amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and reallocate $72 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thanks. Hello, my name is Keenan Livermont. I reside in East Atlanta. I demand that we amend the budget and fund resolution 20-R-4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Black Lives Matter, defund the police. Hi, my name is Katie Bowers. I'm calling to ask that you amend the budget and fund resolution 20-R-4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety in Atlanta. This would be a benefit to all citizens and um, members of the Atlanta community. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Anastasia Greeley, and I am calling to ask that you, the Transportation Committee within the Atlanta City Council, amend the Atlanta City Council budget and fund resolution 20-R-4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. The current system we have is killing black people in our community in staggering rates. And policing is not the answer, even if we do reform it. The police needs to go. We need to have other options. When somebody's having a mental health crisis, we need somebody who's experienced in mental health disability to show up. When somebody is in need of housing, we need somebody, a social worker to show up. Policing is not the answer. They do not have sufficient training, and even the training we could provide, these rules are very specialized. And somebody who's showing up with a gun is more likely to want to use that gun. Please consider reallocating these budgets, uh, this budget to fund things such as transportation, to create more affordable transportation that extends beyond the very small public city system that we have. Um, make, invest in our children's future because I don't want my children to have to fear for their lives and I don't want my, my friends' children to have to fear for their lives. Please consider taking this money away from the police and funding it towards things that really will build our community instead of tear it down. Thank you. My name is Lauren Livingood and I would like to encourage the committee today to reallocate some of the funding in the police budget to update, maintain, and expand public transportation systems and encourage public safety in this regard rather than funding police, which do not protect communities and are actively harmful to our citizens. Thanks. Hi, this is Emily Diffenderfer. I'm a resident in Reynoldstown, and I'm calling again to remind the council of the people's request to amend the FY21 budget to hold 50% or more of the Atlanta Police Department's funding while the group who's going to reimagine public safety in our city prepares their report for November. This weekend, you passed the budget despite hours of constituent feedback, so we're not going to stop until we reach a threshold at which you decide to hear us. Atlantans want you to put those dollars in the string account that was described by Councilwoman I or to show, share the wealth with this transportation department. I bet they would like that. I'd sure love to see more bike lanes, improved sidewalks, way fewer potholes, and maybe some more bus shelters if you do that kind of thing. You know we want a reimagined version of public safety and a stronger community uh, with stronger community services. Stop protecting the aggressors and prove that you're listening to the people. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Asad Abbas. Um, I'm a resident of Home Park in Atlanta. I'm calling to request that you defund um, the Atlanta Police Department um, and defund the uh, Atlanta City um, Detention Center um, and reallocate those funding towards um, reimagining public safety in a non-militant, um, non-violent way, which you know does not involve arms or uh, incarceration in mass. Yeah, and you, bye. Hi, my name is Priya Rajiv, and as a current Georgia Tech student, um, I think I would really like to see um, Atlanta City Council amend the budget and fund resolution 20R468 to create a public safety fund. I think it's in um, my best interest to basically advocate for this because I think that, um, I don't know, we, we just really need to make sure that public safety is a big priority as of right now. And um, we also need to take steps towards holding our police department accountable. Including that, I'd also like um, Atlanta City Council to reallocate 73 million of police funds um, and towards like reimagining public safety. Um, thank you. Hello, my name is Alexis Siller. I am calling the Transportation Committee within the Atlanta City Council. I am demanding that the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 is amended and that $73 million of police funds is reallocated in order to reimagine public safety. And I'm asking that that money be put back into the community and into other resources, such as education, healthcare, mental health, and social services. Hi, this is Hannah Heller calling for the Transportation Committee. Um, I would like to ask you to amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and reallocate money of the police funds um, towards public safety. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Hi, this is Janela Gilmore. Um, I'm a resident of Atlanta, longtime resident of Atlanta, and I'm asking that you amend the budget and fund resolution 20R468 and reallocate the $37 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you very much. I find it very interesting that the very last sentence of that message is that the city council is honored to serve us. My name is Ashley Thomas, and it is a disservice to um, many communities in Atlanta, especially the communities that are um, purposely engineered at the bottom. Um, it's human rights violations to criminalize these communities and giving so much money to the police and so little to community development is doing exactly that. My demand is that the budget be amended and um, fund resolution 20R4068. We gotta reallocate these police funds. You have to, you have to. I don't know how you can sleep at night, <clears throat> how any of you can sleep at night with so much self-interest when you know that a system is so um, oppressing. You are acting in out of predatory capitalism. You are reinforcing it. You are people that we elected, we voted for you, we donated, and this is how you are honoring being council members of this city. Michael Bond, deplorable. Whoever voted no on that amendment, deplorable. And you must have police unions donating to you mostly something because for you to sit in positions of power and only seem to care about the people who either donate or are in similar chairs as you is 
disgusting. Care about everyone, especially the people who eat monetarily. It's, it's, it's powerlessness. It's horrendous. You're colluding. You are truly predatory capitalists. You are colluding. I'm finished with my recording, and I truly hope that you reallocate at least 73 million of police funds. Thank you. Jonathan Williams of Reynolds Town. Chief on the police. Please amend the proposed budget and help fund resolution 20R4068. Help to reallocate funds away from the police and into community services to help reimagine public safety. Hi, my name is Alton Watson and I live in Reynolds Town. I am calling to ask the City Council to amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068. Please reallocate $73 million of the police funds in order to properly reimagine public safety. Thank you. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Meininger and I live in the Cabbage Town neighborhood. I am demanding that you actually listen to your constituents and the hours of voicemails that we are leaving you and the countless emails that you seem to ignore. I demand that you stop having meetings and amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and reallocate 73 million of police funds to reimagine public safety and do it now. Hello, this is Shira Solomon. I'm a resident of Midtown. I hope this call reaches you well. I am calling to, I'm calling concerning the budget. Um, I demand that we amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068, as well as we allocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. It's not required that we, I think it's important that we see what our tax dollars can do better because again, as, as we've said many times in many calls, we are the ones, the residents, paying for these things, so it's important that we feel our dollars are at work. Thank you so much, and I hope you all have a safe day. <laughs> My name is Rebecca, and I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm calling to tell you to amend the budget and fund Resolution 20R4068, and please reallocate $73 million of Atlanta's police funds in order to reimagine public safety. There are so many things you could be putting that money towards besides cops that, you know, are literally a danger to people. So please do that. Thanks. Bye. Hi, my name is Hannah Mustafa, and I'm a resident of Atlanta, Georgia, currently residing in Grant Park. I am calling the Transportation Committee within the Atlanta City Council to demand that you amend the budget and fund Resolution 20R4068 and reallocate the $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. I think this is the least that could be done in order to... Uh, prioritize black lives and minimize police brutality. Again, the demand is to amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 and reallocate the $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. I hope you take this demand seriously and we can start to see some good change happen. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello, this is Jennifer Uzeda. I reside from Newford, Georgia. And I would just like to directly talk to the Transportation Committee within the Atlanta City Council to demand to amend the budget and refund resolution to 20R4068 and reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. We should reduce the police budget and redistribute that money to community-based resources. Thank you, and have a great day. Hello, my name is Yuki Um, I am demanding that you all take the time to make sure that you can amend the budget and find resolution 20R4068 to reallocate 73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Um, in the recent weeks, we've seen that our 
policies in place and the funding of the budget does not meet the demands of the public as it, as it relates to public safety. So let's please be a progressive city um, and make the decision to reallocate funds to where it's needed most. Good morning. My name is Hawa Camera. Um, come on, guys. Like, this is, you guys know why we're calling. You guys have got to amend um, the budget and fund the resolution 20R4068 to be exact. And we need to reallocate $73 million worth of funds away from the police and into social services. We barely have a potholes mix. We don't have public transportation. There's a homeless problem in Atlanta. It's like, guys, come on, way too much money is going into police that aren't doing what they need to be doing. I'm not even one of the people that is saying completely abolish the police, but we need to make our community and public safety safer, and we need to reimagine how that can exist. Don't be a part of what is existing that change, you guys. Think about Elijah McClain, think about George Floyd, Deanna Taylor, all these people who have senselessly lost their lives. Please do the right thing. Hello, my name is Marriott Rombat, and I'm asking that the city council please amend the budget and fund resolution 20-R-4068 and please reallocate these 73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you. Hi, my name is Betty Barnard, and I am a resident of District 2 in Atlanta. I'm calling on the Transportation Committee to amend the budget and fund Resolution 20R4068 to reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you. My name is Alexia Hankins, and I'm calling today to amend the budget and fund Resolution 20R4068 to reallocate 73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Chloe Ralston. I live in DeKalb County in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I was calling because I wanna urge you to amend your city budget to fund resolution 20R4068 and re reallocate the 73 million dollars of Atlanta Police Department funds in order to reimagine public safety in our city. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Isabel Zamnum and I am a resident of Buckhead here in Atlanta. Um, I'm calling today uh, to ask the council to amend the budget in fund resolution 20R 4068 um, and reallocate 73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you. Hi, um, this is Tori Fitzgerald. I'm a resident that lives in Marietta, Georgia, and I am calling on the Transportation Committee Council and um, the Atlanta City Council to amend the budget and fund resolution for 20R4068 and reallocate 73 million of the police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Um, that's all I have for today. Thank you. Hi, I'd like to get to the Transportation Committee within the Atlanta City Council. Um, I'm calling just to leave my feedback on the general fund budget. Um, I'd like to amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 uh, and um, to push to reallocate the $73 million of police funds um, in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you. Hello, my name is Casey Serrano and I'm from the Edgewood neighborhood here in Atlanta and I just wanted to express my extreme disappointment with the city council's inability to pass any legislation that would have cut police funding. Clearly the current system in Atlanta is not working and throwing more money at a broken system is not going to be effective. Instead of continuing to give the police exorbitant amounts of money while we continuously give less and less money to services that help people that actually serve and protect people such as health services um services to fight food inequality food and the lack of food access or education we continue over and over to fund police that kill and attack citizens this needs to end thank you 
Yeah, hi, this is Rachel Rosenstein. I'm just demanding you to amend the budget and fund resolution 20-R-4068 and reallocate the $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Hi, my name is Matt Smith, and I'm at the zip code 30312. I'm asking that the uh, fiscal year 2021 budget be amended and that resolution 20-R-4068 be <coughs> funded. I'm also asking that $73 million be reallocated in police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Hi, my name is Jeff Hibble, Cabbage Town resident. I'm calling today to once again ask that members of the City Council vote for Resolution 20R40 to state and reallocate $73 million of police funds back to the city for reimagining public safety. Since I know this is the Transportation Committee, I'd like to suggest these funds could be better used for improving our city's public transit road infrastructure projects like repairing potholes adding, and adding spike lanes. These are just a few ideas that are vastly better than continuing to waste it on armored vehicles and tear gas. And please just demilitarize my city. Hi, my name is Eleanor Winans. I live in zip code 30310. Um, I'm calling to ask that the budget for fiscal year 2021 be amended and that resolution 20R4068 be funded. Um, I'm also asking that $73 million of police funds uh, be reallocated in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Duncan Watt. I'm calling from Adair Park, MPUV, District 12, where I am in a resident. Calling to leave a comment to the Transportation Committee within the Atlanta City Council. I'm asking you to please amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Asa Arnold. I'm an Atlanta City resident living in Zip Code 30306, District 2. And I am calling to um, reassert the cry to amend the budget and fund resolution 20R4068 as it was agreed upon in the last city council meeting on, or in a city council meeting on Saturday afternoon, and uh, to apply public pressure to the city council to reallocate $73 million of police funds in order to reimagine public safety, which is really a minimal amount in my opinion that it is a step in a positive direction that I think that city council could take, even though I think that there's something more that you all could be doing in spite of contracts and uh, pay raises. But in this message, I will just stick to, um, you know, reassert, uh, reasserting the notion to amend the budget and fund resolution 20 on 4068 as you all um, voted in the majority to amend and I hope that you guys do move forward to this, with us and listen to the people in the spirit of Black Lives Matter. Thanks. And that concludes our public comment. Okay. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you to all the public uh, commenters. And uh, now uh, we have dispensed of all our legislative items, our presentation. Um, so council members, uh, do I have a motion? I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. What's more on? All right. We <laughs> sit in, uh, on consent by all members, and we stand adjourned. Thank you.